joining. To Thank you for starting the, the recording. And why don't we call this meeting to order? We'll start with a roll call. Um, so let me just pull up my participant list. Okay, um, Vice Chair Ono. I am here. Hi, good to see you. Um, Commissioner Siegel. Here. Commissioner Vink. Here. Commissioner Chambers. Here. Commissioner Hurt. Here. And uh, Chair Silba is present. And we will um, make a note for the record should our new member, um, Commissioner LaFleur, join us. Okay, so let's jump into approval of the agenda. Do we have a motion to approve tonight's agenda? I'll make a motion to approve the agenda. This month. Thank you, Vice Chair Ono. Do we have a second? I'll second. Thank you. Vice, excuse me, Commissioner Vink. Commissioner Hurt, how do you vote? I vote aye. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Siegel. Aye. Commissioner Chambers. Aye. Commissioner Solva votes aye. So the agenda has been approved. Why don't we jump now to brief announcements from commissioners and staff. Um, I can start um, just one. It's not really a huge announcement, but just a big thank you um, to Dale and to city staff. Uh, and we saw Robert there last week. Um, it was a really great little tour of the openings for the um, resurfaced tennis courts, the pickleball courts, and the bike polo court, um, which is over in West Manor. It uh, was well attended by members of each of those communities. And so just wanna thank Dale and the city staff um, for all of their work. I think that there were many, many appreciative folks out there really, really excited to start to be able to utilize those facilities. So um, thank you for that. And then also a thank you to Commissioner Chambers who attended um, another opening. I think you'll have to remind me, Mieko, of what it was. It was a bird. Uh, yeah, yeah, it was, I think it was, Dale maybe can correct me. It was like a bird sanctuary, but it was really a structure and Actually, Commissioner Hurt and I both were there. So the thanks should go should be shared between us. Oh, great. Well, thank you all for, and commissioners uh, for representing our commission well in a lot of these openings. Um, any other announcements from commissioners before we hand it over to staff for their announcements? Okay, seeing none. Um, Chris? I will hand it over to you for any staff announcements you might have. Or Dale. I'll defer to Dale first. Dale, you're muted. There you go. So I want to echo my thanks again to the commissioners who were able to be out there uh, on Friday thanking the volunteers. Um, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, it was 600 hours, I believe, the volunteers did to redo the bird entry. It looks lovely. They put a lot of sweat, uh, heart, and, and labor into renovating that entire thing. They're not done yet. They want to do some other things, which we certainly appreciate their efforts. And then, um, as uh, Chair Silvo said, we had a great um, opening. We had probably between the four parks that we opened, we had probably between 75 and 100 people attending all four parks, which is great. Um, we do have two more openings this weekend on Saturday. We actually have at nine o'clock, we have um, the courts, pickleball courts and tennis courts over at Covell Park. So if anyone would like to assist, please let me know. Um, Commissioner Hurt said he can help out. Um, and then at 9.45, we'll be opening up Redwood Park. And that is a combination of pickleball courts, tennis courts, and a junior tennis court, uh, which is interlaid into the tennis court. So if we're available to help out, please let me know or send me a quick text so I can do the script. Uh, but again, a lot of efforts and things. Uh, kudos to everybody. I think it's a opportunity for residents to really appreciate all the hard work that we've done and uh, see their hard tax dollars at work uh, really with those projects. 
um, at the uh, last night's city council meeting, the action uh, hey, Dale. Dale, yeah. sorry, I think you're breaking up. We we lost you after you said last night at the city oh. council meeting, <laughs> and then you broke out. Sorry about that. Um, the action uh, city council took the following action. Uh, they awarded the N Street uh, construction project to Laduca. So we are anticipating N Street Mini Park to start construction probably after Thanksgiving, and it should be done hopefully by uh, March of next year, depending on weather. The city council also approved American Rescue Funds to extend the Healthy Davis testing until June of next year. The council also approved a cannery tenant for the farm. It's going to Theory Ginger Farm to be. And by the time the contract is executed, they'll probably be there probably beginning January of next year. Um, also La Playa, and send in a wave of contracts were executed by the city attorney, city manager and game time corporation. So the equipment has been ordered. So we're hoping to have construction done beginning of early next year. And I would anticipate having those playgrounds done probably by March again, depending on weather. So that is all I have to report out and I'll turn over to Chris and see what she has to report out on. Uh, the, only thing, the only thing I have to add at this point is um, we have begun the process for our parks manager position. We conducted uh, the first round um, interviews a few weeks ago. Um, we have um, multiple candidates that were passed forward to the department for the departmental interviews, and those are scheduled for Monday. November 29th after the holiday. Um, so hopefully we will be able to select a final candidate and um, have somebody on for the new year. First of all, welcome to the commission. I think Dale that you noted for the record um, that Commissioner LaFleur has entered. Sorry, Dale, I just think you're cutting in and out a little bit. Um, but I think that's what you said. So Commissioner LaFleur, welcome. Super excited to have you. And to be here. thanks. And we are just wrapping up any commissioner or staff announcements and we will then move on to the next agenda item. Last call, any other um, staff or commissioner announcements before we move on? Madam Chair, would, would it, without uh, putting Commissioner LaFleur on the spot, would it be okay if he gave a brief introduction of, of, of himself to us? <laughs> let's put him, let's put him on the spot. I love it. <laughs> Commissioner LaFleur, do you want to give us a little uh, intro? Sure. I, I enjoy being on the spot. Um, well, um, thank you for um, the welcome. Uh, yeah, basically I'm uh, recently retired from uh, a little over 35 years of um, parks work. So I was, um, most of my uh, career was with California State Parks. Early part of my career was with the uh, National Park Service. So I'd say about the roughly first half of that time period, I was a real Ranger Rick. So I lived out, out in Hill and Dale, um, got to work and live in great places like Zion National Park, Cape Cod Nas National Seashore, Big Sur State Parks, places like that. And uh, second half of my career, I got the promotion bug going and also needed to settle down, got a family, went through all that. So I uh, actually really enjoyed my uh, career working uh, um, a lot of different uh, headquarters units with uh, California State Parks. So um, it's been great, I, I love it. Um, one of the things I did in particular that uh, impressed me with uh, local parks, city parks was, uh, I was the uh, district planner with state parks out at the American River District. So I was out at Folsom and I really got to work close with the uh, city of Folsom um, uh, government, uh, planning department, parks and recreation uh, department. And um, it was great working with them and we were able to put together uh, just an amazing network of bike trails, alternate transportation routes uh, 
to get people around Lake Natoma. So um, really enjoyed it. And I just left with a lot of respect for uh, local government and what they um, deal with day in, day out. So anyway, I think that's roughly it um, for being on the spot. If anybody has any questions, then I'm happy to answer. Welcome. Is it LaFleur? Is that the way to pronounce your last name? It's uh, LaFleur. Okay. L-E-F-L-O-R-E. LaFleur. Got it. Well, welcome. Thank you. Okay. Why don't we move on to item number four on the agenda, which is public comment. So let's talk a little bit about public comment. You'll hear me say this a couple of times tonight, um, but this first initial public comment, the purpose of this public comment, oh, sorry, lost you for a second. Um, the purpose of this public comment at the beginning of the meeting is for any member of the public to address the commission on matters that are either not listed on the agenda or those that are listed on the consent calendar. And also just want to note, even if uh, the item that you wish to speak about is on the agenda for tonight, if for whatever reason you cannot stay for the entire meeting, it's also completely fine for you to make public comment at this time. Um, so if you would like to make public comment and you are an attendee, um, you can, at the bottom of your screen, there is a button with a little hand and it says raise hand. You can uh, raise that hand button. If you are calling in, you can press star nine and that will uh, indicate to us on our end that you would like to speak. Um, when you are speaking in public comment, sorry, Alan, we'll, I'll open it up in one second. Um, when you're speaking in public comment, um, please limit yourself to no more than three minutes. When you are called on, please state your name for the record and limit yourself to three minutes. Awesome. Okay, uh, Alan, I see you have your hand raised. If, Tamiko, if we could unmute Alan and welcome. Thank you very much. Could you give me a 30 second warning? I don't want to run over my time here. Thank you so much. Um, I presented some, I sent some slides to at the last minute. I know we would show them, I'm sorry. Uh, I, I just want to open a discussion about the maintenance of our trees at our parks and the way they are pruned. I, I, this came to my attention when I looked at the carousel, that wonderful carousel, it's, that was, we had a 25th anniversary. It is hidden by trees. And when you look at the trees, the trees are pruned throughout. I think we have a very low ceiling uh, on our, all our parks. So we don't we miss the gloriousness of high ceiling cathedral ceilings, which I saw in New York City, which I just went, which I got back to when I saw the can, saw this car, there was a carousel in this park in New York City in this high canopy, it was almost identical to the one in Davis. And the presentation was so different. So I, I think we, and I had some discussion back with Rob Kane, the arborist who who's now left us about why that's happening. and. And I'm looking for the science to justify it, and I haven't seen it yet. I'm not an arborist, but I've asked a number of questions and I talked to, actually talked to Rob's, the arborist Rob said he was relying on, and they don't seem to affirm that thing. So I think we should begin an interrogation of how we're pruning our trees, the height of the trees in the parks, as well as our neighborhoods and our downtown. And we're doing the urban forest management plan that's starting up now. And this is an ideal time to re-examine these assumptions. So, so I hope you look at my slides and you will also see appended to it the back and forth I had with Rob Kane about the science behind it. So uh, I just wanna open a discussion. Uh, I know staff's not prepared to respond to this, this thing, but, uh, but also pruning is important because safety in our parks is important too. And we know we had someone killed in our parks with a tree failure. So I think this is a, a robust discussion about pruning quality and the way we're doing it, the best practices would be appropriate over the next couple months. Thank you for listening and thank you for volunteering for this commission. It's, and thank you so very much. Thank you, Mr. Hirsch, appreciate your time and thank you for sending us your slides. Okay, um, I see Karen uh, Carberry go has their hand raised. Karen, would you like to make your public comment? Yes, thank you. Oh, Karen, I think you just muted yourself, sorry. We won't start your time yet, but you might need to unmute yourself. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, great. Now thank you so much. Um, I just wanted to share an observation. 
Um, I'm a member of the Davis Community Garden. And unfortunately, um, there was some significant damage done to the gardens um, recently, which I think we would all agree it was somebody who was mentally ill. Um, but in going down to, to the gardens today, I was extra heartbroken because one of our new community garden members is Asian and their garden had been significantly damaged and they expressed the concern that they thought this was an anti-Asian act. They thought they would be welcome to the garden and welcome to our community and it was very heartbreaking for them to interpret this act as an act of, um, of um, anti- Asian. And I tried to reassure them that they were welcome. Um, but I, I just wanted to share that um, we have these um, underlying, hmm, I don't know, tides, I'm not very good at expressing myself, but um, concerns within our community of um, when such damage is done, that it's, that it's pointed at a, a specific group of people. And I just wanted to express that I'm trying to think of some way to express my solidarity with them. Um, so yeah, just wanted to share that with you that this is kind of heartbreaking for our community. So thank you. Thank you, Karen. I appreciate your comments. And, you know, Karen, just so you know, normally in the public comment, um, it is not kind of a time for dialogue um, and for us to respond, but just given the, um, importance of the topic that you bring up. Just really appreciate you bringing that up because I think that everyone on this commission and our city council and our staff would agree with you that there is no place um, in our community gardens and anywhere in our city for any um, anti-Asian, um, anti any minority groups and anything that is um, targeting those individuals. So if you wouldn't mind um, if you wouldn't mind just kind of sending, we'll put uh, our Parks Commission email address in the chat. Would love to be able to engage with you more in the community gardens to make sure that um, the folks feel supported. And if there's anything that we can do uh, with the Parks Commission to help support individuals um, who have been victims of those types of crimes, we would love to do that. So I will find it and I'll throw it. Do we have a chat in this? We might not have a chat. Let me just read it off. So Karen, if you could grab a pencil as we're talking. Uh, Madam Chair, I just wanted to um, inform the commission. So we are, staff, city staff is aware of the incidents that have occurred at community gardens. We actually had some, um, some individuals that were, making uh, a camp um, near the community gardens a few uh, a couple days ago um, we were working closely with the police department we had the items and that camp dismantled and removed from the site um, we don't know exactly the reason why the vandalism occurred um, last night, but we think it was a direct result of the items being removed. Um, at this point in time, as far as I'm aware, there is no indication that it, there is any type of um, racial orientation to the vandalism. There were, my understanding is there is 12 garden plots that were damaged and vandalized. And so city staff have been actively working with the gardeners um, on those and we'll be making repairs in conjunction with the gardeners. Great, thank you, Chris, so much. And I'm glad that it has been raised to the city staff's attention. Um, and Karen, thank you so much for bringing it to the commissioner's attention because I don't think that, and well, at least I didn't know, I didn't know if others knew. Um, but also um, would still, Karen, if, if there's anything that um, you can think of that uh, might help this individual because even, I mean, I can, it, when folks are of a um, specific minority that has been uh, historically targeted for hate crimes, I can understand why, why even if, you know, I were to say that it was that they weren't targeted, that might not be their experience. And so I want to make sure that people feel validated. So if there's anything that we can do 
um, to help support that individual, please don't hesitate to reach out. Um, our email address is rpc, Rex and Park Commission, rpc at cityofdavis.org. Would love to hear from you. So Karen, thank you. And thanks for representing and supporting um, our community members, uh, folks who um, I'm sure they appreciate it. So thank you. Okay, other, um, sorry, tangent, other uh, folks want to speak in public comments, please raise your Zoom hands. Tamiko, I don't see anybody else. I don't either. Okay, great. Why don't we close public comment then <clears throat> and move to the next item, which is the consent calendar. So for the consent calendar, all matters that are listed under the consent calendar are considered routine and non-controversial requiring no discussion as items are expected to have unanimous support and may be enacted by one motion. Um, tonight on the consent calendar, uh, there are two items, the director's project update as well as Senate Bill 1383, introduction and implementation planning updates. Chris or Dale, anything that you want to say about those or are they just in our uh, packets to review? Both of these items are informational items for the commission. There's no action um, needing, needed by the commission. And Madam Chair, I will give and one further update. We have not heard anything from the state regarding the revitalization Prop 68 grant. I just checked in with the project officer today and no, no news yet. Got it. Okay, thanks. So informational only. Um, and Chris, we still vote on it though, right? We can just pass yes, it. Yes, we do need an, a motion to accept both of the reports. And then if the commission has any questions on it, either of them. Perfect. I think I'm going to ask you like every meeting. I think I ask you every meeting if we vote on consent calendar. One would think I would remember by now. Um, okay, do we have an emo a motion to approve these two items on the consent calendar? I so moved. Thank you, Commissioner Siegel. Do we have a second? No second. Great. Thank you, Commissioner Chambers. Commissioner Hertz, how do you vote? Aye. Commissioner LaFleur. Aye. Vice Chair Ono? Yes. Commissioner Vink? I'll vote aye, but I also want to note this doesn't feel like something we need to take a vote on. It's, but um, there's a motion. I'll, I'll vote aye. But let's uh, think about how we can take purely informational items just as information in the future and speed things along. So noted. Commissioner Silba votes aye. That motion passes. Why don't we move on to the next item? Regular agenda items, great. So uh, when we look at the regular agenda for tonight, we have a couple of items. Um, let me just quickly review. Uh, the first is talking about the 2022 Golden Heart Awards. Um, the second is continued discussion on the draft co-sponsorship and allocation policy for city aquatic facilities. The third is a continued discussion on facility use for community pool. And the fourth is discussion on assembly bill 2404. And so just putting that out there uh, to note that we have four major agenda items. Um, so Chris, can I hand, Chris or Dale, hand it over to you to talk about the first agenda item, which is appointing commission representatives for the Golden Heart Awards. Yes, good evening, commissioners. Um, this evening you have before you um, the staff report. I don't have any additional information other than what's presented in the staff report. Um, each year the city does seek a member of this commission to be a participant of the Golden Heart Awards Selection Committee. This is a, a, a city awards program that was actually implemented and started from that resulting out of this commission. Um, and it is usually joined by a variety of community members and city staff um, for the selection process. Um, it 
typically it can be depending on the number of submissions that we the city receives um, it can vary as far as the time commitment but typically they can usually make the selections in one or two evenings um, for that and then the final awards are presented back to the council in March. So at this time, if there's any commissioners that are interested in participating, um, you can volunteer. And if we have multiple commissioners, you can take a vote. I'd be willing to volunteer if nobody else is interested. Thank you, Great. Thank you, Commissioner LaFleur. Anybody else? Sorry, Chris, can we have two commissioners representing us? Um, I don't know the answer to that based on what the city staff person who is responsible for this um, has planned. What I would suggest is that you designate a primary and a secondary, and then I can forward both names over to the staff person. Got it. Okay, Commissioner LaFleur, Commissioner Chambers, do any of you feel super strongly about being primary or secondary? No. No. <laughs> I, I'm ha I'm happy to to let Commissioner Lafora take the front on this. I'm I'm on I'm on a subcommittee already, so that can be my contribution for now. And then if something comes up, I'm happy to be his backup. Perfect. Sounds, Sounds good. good. Chris, would you like a motion for that, or is it okay to just move forward with Commissioner Lafora as primary? No, that's fine. Perfect. I think you'll like it, Rick. It's um, I I did it. I participated the first year, and it was really a great kind of way to see a lot of um, or first to meet some of the city staff and understand um, what some of the other kind of groups do because you kind of bring bring some folks together to serve on the panel, and then just a lot of great interactions with um, the residents of Davis. Sounds great. And thank you for thank you for volunteering. Okay, well, that was a quick item. Why don't we move on to the next agenda? Oh, I should open it up for public comment. I see that, my apologies. Um, before we move on to the next item, uh, if there is anyone who is interested in making public comment on the um, commission representative for the Golden Hearts Award Selection Committee, please raise your hand on Zoom. Okay, seeing none, we can close public comment. Thank you. Okay. I was gonna make a really cheesy joke, like let's jump into the pool, uh, pool stuff. Um, <laughs> so item 6B, uh, continued discussion on draft co-sponsorship and allocation policy for use of city aquatic facilities. So just to bring uh, Commissioner LaFleur and others who might be joining us for the first time on this topic, I think this might be the third meeting in a row uh, that we have had this agenda item on our agenda. Um, we have a subcommittee of um, Commissioner Chambers and Commissioner Vink who get like the gold star um, for the month or maybe even for the year of really engaging with our aquatic users in the city of Davis um, in the kind of drafting of this policy and kind of the revamping of that policy. So um, I guess I will hand it over to uh, Commissioner Chambers and Commissioner Vink to maybe just give us an update on what has uh, happened since our last meeting and maybe give us kind of a status check as to um, where everyone is at. I'd be happy to turn it over to Commissioner Chambers. She's really been <clears throat> doing the lion's share of the, the work on this. I've had some family obligations that have uh, gotten in the way of my participating more fully. Um, sure. sure, I'm happy to kind of give just a little bit of a rundown. So, um, 
so uh, Commissioner Vink and I were invited to attend the Aquatics Council uh, meeting a couple Tuesdays back. Um, it was a really great opportunity, I think, to hear from the user groups directly and kind of see the collaboration that um, is ongoing, I hope, um, to, con to continually ongoing. Um, and uh, it was nice to be able to kind of just have a good discussion and communicate about um, some of their concerns and, and what their thoughts were behind those um, concerns and how it benefited the group and just get a different perspective. Um, and I'm really pleased that I took, um, you know, their suggestions back to um, the city staff and we were able to get those incorporated for the most part, um, you know, with some uh, negotiation, not negotiation, but just some, you know, mutual collaboration between the two. Um, and I, uh, I personally am really thrilled with the outcome of the policy. I think that it's really fair and um, equitable for all of the user groups. I think it uh, doesn't overdo or overstep the city's boundaries and keeps it within kind of the scope of trying to keep it simple and straightforward uh, without putting any extra burden on the city staff. So, um, I really uh, am looking forward to kind of a further discussion just to get the feedback on what some of the other commissioners think, but I really do want to um, give credit to Dale and Chris and Christina for taking time to communicate with me as well as um, all their invested hours of work into this policy as well. So um, with that, I will, you know, if Eric has anything else to add, but I'll hand it back to you, Darcy. Yeah, if I could just uh, pin real quickly, first off, a, a thank you to the user groups for their great spirit of cooperation and the time they met, but especially a thank you to Dale, Christina, and Chris for considering the, the reasoned uh, rationales that the user groups provided and incorporating most of their recommendations into the policy that's before us this evening. Um, I don't think uh, there's a complete agreement on everything, but the range of, uh, of disagreements has been narrowed significantly. So yeah. really appreciate okay. everyone's work and a special appreciation for Commissioner Chambers who really stepped in and did the lion's share of the, uh, of the involvement at the Aquatics Council and, and stayed when I waved my white flag and had to reach <laughs> <laughs> but it's been a very long day for me. So thank you all the way yeah, around. No problem. You're welcome. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Um, Chris or Dale, anything that you would like to add? I know that at least in hearing what Commissioners Chambers and Bing said, I know that you both have also had a lot of work on, on the policy. Any other kind of thoughts or things you want to bring to the commission's attention before we um, ask any technical questions or, um, yeah. So, um, as both of the subcommittee members, uh, reiterated to the commission, this has been a fairly lengthy process in getting all the community input. Um, and it's been extremely beneficial to have the aquatic council, um, working outside of the meetings and bringing proposals to to sorry about that to the uh, commission for consideration at this point I think we are very very close I did want to make one correction on the draft um, of the the version three there was a section that we did um, the city did agree to um, as proposed by the Aquatic Council that was not highlighted in the draft. And so I wanted to point that out to the commission. On um, page three of the policy, item number six, where it says um, significant size of the groups, the city did concede to change the wording of that. Um, so that that was more clear because I think both all parties were in agreement. It just didn't read that way in the policy. And we'd like to change the wording of that 
um, to say that the co-sponsored organizations must have a membership of at least 50 um, members, which must meet the 75% residency requirement for that. So we're, it, we're removing the Davis residents out of there and replacing it by member of that. And then um, related to that same um, criteria, um, let's see, it is on, let's see. Um, on page five of the draft, we're under priority four. Um, item number B says they serve primarily Davis residents and the minimum 85%. That should be 75% as well. So I just wanted to point out that we do, the city is in agreement with um, the Aquatic Council on those items for that. Um, the areas um, that we still, um, staff still has some concerns about um, is on page five, there are some um, areas that are highlighted in red that um, needed some clarification and requested additional language on. Um, so staff is looking to, from the commission and from members of the council, um, whether or not those, the wording of those are appropriate. Um, this is still kind of an area that has been, I think, under discussion um, with all the groups. And then the other areas that the city and the aquatic council is still not in agreement yet is the hours of operation for the Arroyo and Manor Pool complexes. Um, pre, in the previous proposal, um, the Manor Pool complex was requested to be um, 5 a.m. to 9.30 p.m., I believe, for all days of the week. Um, we have conceded, the city's conceded to allow the 5 a.m. to 9.30 Monday through Saturday, um, but we do feel very strongly about reducing the Sunday hours um, for the neighborhood from 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. for that. Chris, while you're going through that, can I just ask one question? Is what is the red, what does the red indicate um, in this? Those are, er those are areas that were not in agreement and okay. have not been that's confirmed what, yet. That's what I thought. I just wanted to confirm that. Right. Okay. Sorry to interrupt you. Yeah. Um, and then um, the same thing goes for a Royal pool complex. We'd still like the Sunday hours to be reduced um, as a good neighbor to our residents that live adjacent to both of these complexes. We do feel that there is adequate swim time um, being provided without having to do those early morning hours on Sunday. And so we would, staff would still like to make that recommendation to council to reduce those hours. And it's not just because of the aquatic groups. There are so many other users in these parks facilities that impact <clears throat> the noise around the complexes. Um, the city has been experienced, has experienced noise complaints in the past related to the pickleball over at the Slide Hill Park. And there's other activities there too. Um, so we just think these are, this is a good time to look at everything um, with a fresh eye and try to resolve um, issues that we know have come up in the past for that. And then I believe I think that's really the only main areas um, that there is still some um, and uh, some undecided 
um, the seasonal schedules and the deadlines, those dates have all been resolved and accepted by both parties. So I think we're good unless the commission has questions and then. So sorry, just to summarize. So you pointed out the change in, so we have what we have in front of us. You pointed out the change in item four, which was just the change in percentage. We just have to tweak that, but everybody's good with that. And then the second one, like typo thing you mentioned was, I think it was item seven. Is that right? No, uh, no item six. six on page three. Six, item six. And that was a typo that everybody agreed was okay. Yeah, we're, we were removing Davis residents and just putting members. They have to have 50 members. Got it. And of those 50 members, 75% must be residents. Okay. And it sounded like everyone was in agreement with that? Yes, that's okay. my understanding. Perfect. And then the only other, so those two are changes that need to be made in the document, but that everyone seems to agree on. And then what I hear you saying is that what is written in red on page six is just the last kind of outstanding where there's some uh, disagreement. Okay, yes. got it. On I just page, wanted to... And, yes, and on page, page five. five, I'm sorry, on page five and page six. Page five and page six. Okay, I just wanna make sure that we're, there has been so much work that has gone into this policy. I uh, just wanna make sure that we stay focused as to what still has not been um, agreed upon. Sorry, Commissioner Vink, go for it. Yeah, just, uh, well, thank you first off for that because that was my first clarifying question. And so it's, <clears throat> it's now clear to me what we have in front of us. But Chris, my, my second clarifying question is on page five, um, Subpart E, that's one of the red items toward the top of the page. And the second sentence, I think I'm getting it, but it's missing a word or words. And I just want to make sure that it's just missing a simple word and not something more complex. But it currently reads, approved co-sponsored organizations shall equal opportunity during each scheduling allocation period. Did you mean shall have equal opportunity during each scheduling allocation period, or was it more yeah. complicated than that? No, that is correct. Okay, Me thank you. already highlighted that for us. Uh, and I'm that. sorry for not uh, mentioning that earlier. I just noticed uh, it's one of those things you read and then you reread and you realize uh, something's not right. Yes, there. we're missing a word. Got it. Thank you. That's it. Thanks, Madam Chair. And so just so I'm clear, on page five, sorry to get so like in the weeds, but in on page five, items B through E, Chris, those are in red. Um, why are those in red? So the two previous drafts had language in there that members of the public expressed concerns about. And the Aquatic Council had proposed some additional language. And then both um, the Aquatic Subcommittee members, Miko and Eric, um, also met with the groups. And these two uh, items, D and E, I believe were discussed pretty heavily. Um, and there was not a consensus or agreement, full agreement amongst all the groups for these items. Um, my understanding based on communication that was received today, that there is still not agreement amongst all of the groups for um, the language that has been proposed by individual members of the council. Um, so this language was proposed, <coughs> excuse me, by um, Mieko as you know, a summary of her kind of recollection of the discussion and kind of the intent behind it. Um, we tried to come up with the best language, but we're open to suggestions on this. However, um, city staff does have some concerns about the language that was proposed 
in one of the email correspondence that was received today. So, got it. So, from a city staff perspective, do you have issues with how it is currently written and what we see in page five? No, that is what is being recommended from the city oh, staff and Perfect. from uh, the subcommittee. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. That's just what I wanted to clarify. So, so um, if we are kind of scrolling through the document and sorry to, I, I know I'm in the weeds a bit, but just want to make sure that we're all on the same page. So page one, everybody's in agreement. Page two, everybody's in agreement. Three and um, this is with the edits on items four and item six, um, the tweaks that we've already talked about that everyone is in agreement with. When we get to page five, there is an area in red that the city staff and the subcommittee are good with, but per some public comment, um, emails that came through um, requesting other language. Page six, there is still um, a need for our group tonight to kind of work on what is written in red and then that's it. <laughs> Everything else is good. Is that? Um, the only other comment that I would like to add is that based on the last proposal from the Aquatic Council, they had requested that the manor, pool, manor dive well be added into the um, inventory of available pools to use. Um, city staff is not prepared to add that at this time. Um, we would like to bring that as a discussion item to the council um, and let the council decide because it has significant budgetary impacts. Um, the dive well is not a body of water that we typically have available and open year round. Um, so there would be increased costs um, to the city for maintaining that for users. And so there needs to be a vegetary discussion on how those costs would be recouped. And Got then it. secondly, that particular dive well is also anticipated to be used by the school district for their dive team. So we don't believe that there's going to be, um, there will be a period of time, a short period of time when the, that part of the facility is not open and available to other users. Um, so there just needs to be some further discussion on it. I'm not, um, city staff is not opposed to adding it at a later date and amending the policy, um, but it needs to have um, more of some count, more internal discussions and with the council. Got it. Noted. We're not talking about a diving pool. Okay. So let's just walk through what our steps will be tonight. First, we will open it up for technical questions that commission members have. So my apologies if you're hearing my children screaming in the background. Um, first, we will open for technical questions. If any commission members have technical questions for city staff or for our subcommittee, we'll do that first. Then we will open it up for public comment, and then we will do another round um, of commissioners um, making their kind of comments and recommendations. So that being said, I see that Vice Chair Ono has his hand raised. Robert, do you want to go ahead and go first? Right. I, I First of all, I'd like to thank the community for working on this, as well as city staff and the commission members. Uh, but one thing that, as I look at the areas in red, one thing that was a little bit interesting to me was it seems that the pool for Arroyo on Sundays, it would open at 8 a.m., but Monday through Saturday, Saturday inclusive, uh, it would over, open at 6 a.m. So I was wondering, do people sleep later on Sundays and not on Saturdays? Or what, what feeds, what drives those hours? It seems like, I guess I just don't understand. And maybe that there's some way to, to clear, help me understand that. Great technical question for us non-swimmers. <laughs> um, 
Chris or Dale, um, any comments on that? Um, this is this is a common theme that we as city staff receive um, that related to park use is that activities start too early, especially on the weekend hours, um, and that it wakes people up. Um, during the weekdays, people do tend to get up a little bit earlier, get up and out of the house, especially for our commuters um, that go into the Bay Area or up into Sacramento. Um, it's not as prevalent. Um, having one day where they don't have um, a lot of organized activity in the park and it's available for the residents and to have some quiet um, use in the park is, I think, a good faith, good neighbor policy to have for the city. Um, the hours that are listed here for Arroyo, those are hours that the city council has already um, agreed upon with the neighborhood many years ago. Um, so we do not encourage that those hours be changed. Um, the neighborhood would not probably receive that change of hours very, um, very positively if the council chose to back off of that policy. Thank you, Chris. It sounds like there's a precedent for those times and the neighborhood understands that for Saturday's uh, pool activity in that area starts at six. It was just uh, my not understanding the background of that made me wonder. But thank you. Thank you, Vice Chair. Any other, Robert, before you go off camera, any other questions um, from you? No, no others. Great, thanks. Commissioner Siegel, I saw you had your hand raised for a second. Did you have a technical question? Well, I was just going to agree with uh, Commissioner Ono. It seems odd that Sunday is treated differently than Saturday, or maybe it's better to put it the other way around. I was going to say that perhaps Saturday, they should, Saturday and Sunday should have the same hours, which would be a eight o'clock start time. Uh, but I lowered my hand when uh, I believe someone said, well, this has already been agreed upon with the council and, you know, we probably shouldn't change that. But I think uh, Commissioner Ono's point was not to make Sunday earlier, but to make Saturday later, because in fact, the weekend is usually Saturday and Sunday for folks who don't work on the weekend. But if that's the, uh, the precedent and that's what's been agreed upon, I guess there's no point in uh, opening that up. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Siegel. Any other technical questions? Okay, seeing none, why don't we open it up for public comment? So if you uh, would like to make a public comment, we ask that you please, uh, if you are on Zoom, you can at the bottom of your screen, look for the raise hand button, um, a little hand, you can click on that. If you are calling in, you can press star nine. Um, please limit yourself to three minutes. Um, before you start speaking, please provide your name for the record. And let's open it up for public comment. Tamiko, I'm not seeing any hands raised. Neither do I. Okay. Thank you all. Um, why don't we close public comment? Okay, again, reframing our discussion. Um, would love to now hear from commissioners on their thoughts um, regarding this topic. And let me just remind us, I mean, I'm reminding myself, but also reminding the group um, that this agenda item, our goal for it is to receive public comment and feedback 
and provide comments and recommendations to city staff concerning the draft policy. So our hope is that at the end of this agenda item, we will be able to um, recommend uh, to city staff our, um, I was gonna say blessing, but it, it's not appropriate to use a religious word uh, to, to provide our uh, recommendations for this draft policy. Um, so with that being said, would there are there any commission members that would like to start us off? Madam, Madam Chair, before we start a commission discussion, I just wanna update the commission. This item was tentatively scheduled to go before the city council on Tuesday, the 21st. Um, there is some discussion that this item might need to be moved up until the 14th. So that is um, our, our goal as city staff is to try to wrap up this policy um, discussion item tonight so that we can prepare staff reports um, for that December council meeting, if Hi. possible. Um, those days are Fridays, uh, Chris. Do you mean a different, you're talking about December? Do you mean a council meeting in December on a Tuesday in December? Yes, they're both I'm in sorry. December. It no. was scheduled on yes. my, the 21st. Yeah, my bad. I was looking at the wrong calendar. I get it now. Okay, thank <laughs> you for that clarification. I think that we can leave this meeting with a decision, given that it's the third meeting in a row we've had this item on. Um, so yes, thank you for the clarification on um, the dates. Okay, who would like to go first? Any comments related to this policy? Eric, I see you're unmuted. Yeah, thank you. I, I guess I'll jump in here. Um, I mean, I think this has really winnowed down the issues of concern considerably. Um, I, I appreciate uh, Chris highlighting, you know, where the the count the the um, city staff are making recommendations that might differ a little bit from the user groups. Um, I'm still not quite sure we've got the right language on um, priority three, specifically subparts D and E, but I'm also struggling to come up with uh, good language that might replace that. So I'm, I'm pretty much ready to support what's here, but really uh, I'm, I'm appreciative that we've narrowed down the range of uh, outstanding issues significantly. Great, thank you, Commissioner Bank. Commissioner or Vice Chair Ono, I see you're unmuted. Um, well, I'm also supportive of this. The only question I have is those sections in red, are they still subject to city staff discussion and uh, decisions? Uh, because I'm trying to put my head around, is the commission uh, supportive of this as it is or this as it is with some city movement on these areas in red. And that's where my confusion is. I think our goal, Robert, at the end of this is, is that there is no more red in the document, um, that, it, that anything that is currently written in red, um, I think that the red was for Chris to kind of highlight the quote unquote controversial uh, areas just to bring those to our attention, but that um, the way it is currently written is um, staff's preference. Chris, is that a fair way to state it? Yes, so this is the staff's recommendation combined with the feedback and input from the two subcommittee, aquatic subcommittee members. So we are asking the commission either to recommend moving forward with this draft policy as it's written um, and or making any modifications to it or not recommending the policy altogether, which we do certainly do not hope that's the case after all of us have worked on this. Um, 
if the commission does decide to move this policy forward, um, the areas that are still not in agreement between the user groups and the city will, will continue to be highlighted for the council so that they know um, where there still is some disagreement on those areas. That's helpful. Thank you very much. But sorry, just to clarify, Chris, it seems like that's just the hours on the opening times. It would be the hours and uh, the language in items D and E. Um, it so far, based on the input that I have received from community members, um, it's only items D and E that have some language concerns. I'm sorry, let me just clarify that with Commissioner Chambers because I mean, I think it's, if there is one, one or two people who said that they are concerned with verbiage versus the Aquatic Council, um, Commissioner Chambers, did the Aquatic Council um, look at page five items B through E? Yeah, they did. Um, but I think that the way it was originally written in version two, it was, uh, I think people were interpreting it slightly differently. So the language here was was really meant to clarify and simplify what the city really was meaning by DNE. Um, and uh, so I, I think that the Aquatics Council as a whole could not make a recommendation because the user groups were split. Um, but, you know, in all fairness, I think that the language that's here now does appreciate for um, like equity amongst all the user groups. And it, at, the, at the end of the day, it still requires them to work collaboratively to settle on some sort of pool allocation schedule. And not only that, um, the language is simplified and as well, it really still takes the burden off of the city to make these decisions. Now, how the user groups want to go about, um, you know, divvying up the pool time, that's going to be up to them to figure out. Um, but at the end of the day, I think it's the city's job to kind of play Switzerland and be equal and, and let everybody, you know, be on, on the same playing field. So um, my long, short answer, I guess, is uh, yes, <laughs> they couldn't agree. <laughs> Got it. Yeah, I, so, I, I say we I say we recommend this and then let's see how it works in practice. Maybe there will need to be some modest tweaks to it in the future, but I, I think we've got a much improved policy and it hopefully will, just as Commissioner Chambers said, I think it will be helpful to the city staff so that they can be like Switzerland. I appreciate that. <laughs> Sorry, I, that's the only thing that could come to mind. So no, thank you. I, I appreciate that. I just wanted to make sure. I mean, I no, no policy is ever going to be um, thumbs up by every single person. And so I think Eric, you said it earlier, which is this, this version is just so much improved from um, previous, previous versions. So, okay. Any other comments or questions or maybe even a motion? I'll make a motion, Madam Chair, to approve the, um, the draft um, co-sponsorship and allocation policy for city aquatic facilities with the three specific changes that Chris outlined earlier. One is on page three, substituting Davis residents for the word members. And the other two are on page five and in inserting the word have on subpart E toward the top of the page and substituting 75 for 85 on um, priority four subpart B, just to be absolutely clear. Thank you. Hopefully somebody took notes when Eric just said that. Um, I, so I've, that I've, is- I've, I've got it here if anyone needs it. And I, th I think Chris has it down too, so. Perfect. I'd like okay. to second that motion. Perfect. So we have a first, uh, we have a motion and a second. 
Um, so let's go through roll call. Um, Vice Chair Ono. Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Siegel. Uh, yes. Okay. Um, Commissioner Hurt. Yes. Commissioner LaFleur. Yes. And Chair Soba votes yes. Awesome work. Commissioner Chambers and Commissioner Bank, thank you so much for your work. And to Chris and Dale, thank you so much as well. Um, I know that a lot of blood, sweat and tears and to all the aquatic council members who uh, are either on tonight's call or participated in the meetings, there just seems to be so much synergy coming together um, for equality in the, and equity in the pools. And so just really want to, um, thank everyone for their work on this item and um great to have it closed out okay let's move on to the next item continued discussion on facility use options for the community pool complex so chris can i hand it over to you to kind of intro this item to the commission uh -huh. yeah so um, this item was introduced back um, to the commission at your October 13th meeting, uh, just as an introduction and to begin a dialogue with the commission and the public related to potential facility use options for the community pool complex. Um, the commission at that time requested that staff um, bring back some additional information um, so that the commission could um, especially our newer members could kind of familiarize themselves with some of the previous studies that hit the city has completed for the community pool complex and some of the history. And so we've attempted to do this without getting into a lot of depth into the financial aspects of it, but we tried to give you a little snapshot in time um, for revenues and expenses Related, um, related to this complex. And I will kind of give you some background as I go through the staff report for that. Um, as I mentioned in the staff report, this complex has been an ongoing discussion item for probably two decades. <laughs> it has been just a, a constant um, item for that has kind of, a, ever evolving different circumstances, both internal and external have affected this facility's operations. But the, the large um, kind of point where the this complex came to the forefront was during uh, 2011 when the city was um, experienced all the budget shortfalls. And the city had to make some very significant budget reductions and um, our depart the Parks and Community Services Department was asked to come up with a very large percentage of reductions, um, one of which we tried to spread those reductions across as many, um, many facilities and programs and services um, as, as fairly as possible. Um, obviously with the pools, there are some higher um, operational costs and that we could potentially have some um, potential savings. <clears throat> the council did, um, as one of their budget reduction measures, they did decide to close the community pool complex um, for an undetermined amount of time um, until possibly the city was in a better financial position or um, a decision was made on the future of the complex, whether the complex was going to be dismantled and renovated or um, dismantled and reused for another purpose. There was a variety of discussions. Um, as a result of that budgetary decision, um, the uh, DART's swimming team did come forward and with a proposal to the city 
to um, lease the facility for the months of March through October for that, for their swim program and their team um, meets and such. And they did um, provide some additional revenues for the city and the city was able to keep that pool um, in an operable condition with the help of darts. Um, and that complex has benefited tremendously from darts using that complex. <coughs> At the time, we did not have um, any other user groups that were coming forward with interest for using that complex um, in the same manner as was being proposed by DARTS. And so the city did um, accept that as a short-term um, arrangement and has renewed those on multiple occasions through um, since 2011. Um, the agreements have been anywhere from one year um, up to, I believe, three years um, at any one length of time. Related to the community pool complex, we did send you um, the final report that was done by the aquatic design group which was a consultant team that the city hired to determine the feasibility of renovating the community pool complex and what options the city could potentially be looking at as far as operating costs and actual design. And so it really became down to a preference of whether or not the complex was going to be designed for our competitive user groups or <clears throat> for the general public to use as a recreational amenity or some hybrid of the, of the two. And based on the city council's direction for um, cost recovery and the level of subsidy that they did not want to increase um, for the aquatic user groups use of um, our pool complexes, the consultant recommended a hybrid design for the complex that would generate um, revenue from the user groups for their team practices and meets, but also provide some recreational opportunities for the public. Um, there was a lot of continued discussion after the ADG report was finalized. Um, the Aquatic Council, I don't want to speak on their behalf, but um, the Aquatic Council expressed concern that some of the um, expenditure costs associated in the consultant report were too high. The city then contracted with the sports management group and took a further dive into, literally, uh, <laughs> took a little dive into um, the financials a little bit deeper to really fine tune those. Um, and it was found that those cost estimates could probably be reduced slightly at that time. Um, we do not believe that that is still the case given uh, construction costs that the city is experiencing now. Um, and we also were able to confirm that all of the user groups could potentially their needs be met with a 50 meter pool um, at community pool complex for that. Um, we have since <coughs> most recently had um, a, two other studies done. One was from Ballard and King that um, our city manager requested um, based on a proposal that the darts had submitted for, to take over the operations of the community pool and potentially other city pool complexes. Um, that independent review was done by Ballard and King and that report was also presented to you um, with their findings as well. And then most recently, the city um, began discussions with the school district 
related to a joint use facility to be located potentially at community pool or on the high school campus um, as part of their bond project and that it would be a joint use for our aquatic user groups, but also for the district's um, swim teams and water polo teams and dive teams. Or that those discussions, unfortunately, did not materialize and were not successful in resulting in a joint use facility. And the district has decided to move forward with their own 50 meter pool in the middle of the camp, high school, Davis High School campus. Um, and it is anticipated to open in the fall of 2023. Um, and simultaneous to those discussions, we also had um, Matt Coda, who was the from Bay Area Urban Economics, who also did some financial analysis, and we provided that report to you as well um, on the feasibility and potential design options that the city and the school district could consider for a joint facility. So before you, I also provided the table that gave you kind of a six year history um, of the revenues and expenditures um, associated with this complex. Um, this, as I mentioned, there's been a lot of influences with this complex <coughs> that have affected the cost recovery or the city's level of subsidy for this facility. Um, it, it's probably one of the fewer facilities that we have that doesn't have a real somewhat consistent cost recovery. Um, it goes kind of up and down and fluctuates quite a, significantly. But um, as you can see in the chart, our cost recovery compared from revenues to expenses have continued to increase, um, partly due to DART's contributions. Um, but pr those increases in cost recovery have really been the direct result of the city's actions to take for increased fees and revenue generation. <coughs> um, in multiple reports and the consultant studies, um, it was very clear that the city was not charging market rate and was significantly lower than other agencies in the region. And so we had began to phased in approach of raising incrementally the pool rental fees for user groups. And then just this year, effective September, we did um, implement a new rate structure that is charging a per hour per lane rate, which was recommended in the Ballard King study and also in the Bay Area Urban Economics report. So there, there are a lot of influences that affect the cost recovery. Um, as I wrote in the report, during the times when we had all the extreme wildfires in 2019, um, many of the organizations could not use our city pools due to the poor air quality. And so we did credit them. And so some of the revenue losses were experienced then it was pretty significant. <coughs> Um, and obviously, the pandemic has changed the nature of our revenue collection at many of our pool complexes also over the last two years. Um, initially, there was no use of the city pools. And then um, the city was able to provide um, our complexes and open them up for the user groups to use, but not for the general public for a period of time as well. And so that has all affected the revenue as well. Um, let's see. I, I think that's it for right now and just opening it up. Um, we are tentatively scheduled to bring this item before city council um, on either Tuesday, December 14th or the 21st, depending on when it is scheduled with the council um, to try and uh, begin having a discussion. The current license agreement with the DARTS um, swim organization does expire in the end of December. 
So we would like to have some kind of direction from the council um, as to what staff uh, should be directing staff what to do next for the potential use of community pool. Um, at this time, because of the ongoing pandemic and some of the conflicting needs of all the groups, staff is recommending that the community pool complex um, not be renewed for um, a license agreement of that complex by an individual user. Um, we are recommending that that stay within the city's inventory um, for at least the time being until the city um, is somewhat clear of the pandemic um, and that we get the policy adopted and implemented and also um, seeing what the effects are going to be as the school district um, stops using city facilities and uses their own 50 meter pool. Um, we don't recommend the council there's a lot of unknowns there, and we don't recommend that the council um, proceed with any long-term agreement at this time. <coughs> Got it. Thanks, Chris. That was a very detailed explanation, and we really, really appreciate it. Um, so again, just to kind of keep myself on track um, and maybe others, uh, the purpose of this agenda item is to, uh, one, for the commission itself to receive additional information on prior year operational revenues and expenditures. So um, just for Commissioner LaFleur's um, benefit, we initially talked about this at our last meeting, um, but there were a lot of questions about finances and expenditures uh, that um, you know, we threw those questions at Chris and Dale at the last minute and didn't give them an opportunity to provide any of the reports, expenditure reports that they have since provided. Um, and so that I think was, at least for me, one of the big pieces that um, was really helpful to look at. And so uh, the first piece is that we wanted to receive additional information on the expenditures to help us make the decision or excuse me, make a recommendation. Um, to have public comment for this topic and then per the staff report, make an ultimate uh, potential recommendation for future facility use. Um, and if you scroll to um, page, I'm in the RPC packet that was emailed out to the group um, there. I'm sorry, if somebody could direct me to what page where the three options are. Darcy, it's actually a separate attachment. It's oh. not in the original um, packet. It was sent out a, at a later date. Okay. Mieko, if you have it in front of you, can you read what the three options are? I'd be happy to. Thanks. Um, so it says recommendation. Staff recommends the following actions. One, receive public comment and provide feedback on potential options for future facility use of the community pool complex. So the choices are A, negotiate and renew license agreement with DARTS for exclusive use of the community pool. B, solicit a new request for proposal for exclusive use of the community pool complex for up to a maximum of three, a three year term. C, retain the scheduling and use of the community pool complex as part of the city's own programming upon the expiration of the existing license agreement in December of 2021. Thank you. I found it as you were in the middle of talking. <laughs> um, and so in um, just hearing what Chris said in um, reference to the BAE report, and the Ballard and King report, as well as um, some of the previous work that has been done, the city is recommending out of those A, A, B, and C that Commissioner Chambers just listed, the city is recommending option C, but the purpose of our discussion tonight is to hear public comment and make um, either support or adjust that recommendation. Chris, I saw you came off mute. Did I say something wrong? No, I was just gonna say that is correct. and. This recommendation is not in any way reflective 
um, negatively toward DART's use of the complex. Um, it has been a very complementary and beneficial relationship with the city. Um, it's just the circumstances um, at this time are very different from when this original agreement and arrangement was negotiated. And how long ago was that? How long has the arrangement been in place? Sorry. Since 2011. I was going to say, I thought it was 10 years, but just wanted to double check. Okay, so we have our task. Um, I see a couple of commissioners with their hands raised. So just again, so we're clear, we will first ask technical questions of Chris and Dale or referencing any of the reports. We will then open it up for public comment and then we will come back to commission members to make final um, comments and recommendations. Okay, I'll stop talking. Commissioner Siegel, you have your hand raised. You wanna go first with any technical questions? Yes, uh, thank, thank you very much. Uh, clearly I'm new to this discussion and it's quite complex, but uh, just in looking at the three options, uh, you know, and that was a very good staff report, November 17th summary, but it does occur to me that A, B and C does not actually uh, encompass the universe of options. The first, the first two are uh, for a, suggesting an exclusive use of the community pool. Now, A is clear to me that it would be an exclusive use for DART, but the second one is a little less clear to me, and maybe I'm not understanding this properly, but it says solicit a new proposal uh, a new request for proposal for exclusive use of the community pool complex for up to a maximum of three years. And then C is actually just kind of opening it up at all. But why, why, why couldn't one uh, solicit an RFP for a uh, proposal from any group that was not for exclusive use, for example? I think we discussed the last time that it would be interesting if DART um, told us for the programs that they have, how many hours per week or how many hours per day, whatever, that they thought that they needed, but that the, the difference between that and the number of hours the pool could be open, the pool could be then open for community use. So I would think that there could be certainly an option D, A, B, C, D, which, is, which would be something to the effect that I'm not gonna word this particularly well on the spur of the moment, but solicit a new request for a proposal for use of the community pool as part of a more comprehensive approach to this complex so that it is a mixed approach, meaning some usage by organizations like DART but then some uh, other uh, opportunities for other activities to be there. I guess what I'm trying to do here after having tried to read through the material that folks sent out is why can't we try to sort of split the difference, so to speak? I mean, I, this may not be the time for this discussion, but it seems to me that DART has some very important programs, um, and, but they may not need exclusive use of that complex for those programs. And there may be an opportunity for other things to take place there as well. So uh, I would ask staff to come up with some sort of uh, recommendation D or at least option D that is a hybrid that would satisfy uh, at least my concerns, which have not been perhaps very clearly stated. That's, yeah. that's, that's my first, uh, uh, perhaps this is not a technical question. Uh, no, 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 I actually uh, do because so I think, I think um, Commissioner Siegel, I had the same technical, I think if I remember correctly, I had the same technical question. And um, I j just to kind of clarify that I think what you described, okay, right. So the technical question is what happens if one group doesn't need full usage the way you just explained and it's like a hybrid where multiple groups use. In that case, we would fall back on the allocation policy that we just approved, oh, not approved, that we just recommended um, for approval in that um, it would be distributed based on usage and based on you know what groups need what. Um, 
And so I do, and I just want to clarify, Chris, right? Like if we were, so I think Commissioner Siegel, what you just described is option C with the use of the allocation policy that we just reviewed. So I just want to confirm with Chris that that's the case, right? That if um, we go with option C, if there is the need for a hybrid approach that that pool allocation policy then pops up to help understand how the hours get distributed? Yeah, I, I would just say, if I may, that I don't believe that option C is clear enough about our, at least about my intention. It's more, option C is kind of like, well, we'll let sort of things happen. But I think the advantage of something else and um, RFPs is that we would also then get a sense of the financial commitment because the other, the other thing that I'm, I'm unclear on and maybe uh, the staff have, can explain this better is I, when I look at their table, um, they talk about uh, expenditures and I'm just, or excuse me, revenues. And I'm just gonna focus on 2021. The revenues were, uh, let me put my glasses on here so I can Could read Could you this. tell us what page you're referencing, please? Uh, the, 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 probably it's page four of the staff, of the staff summary, I guess, uh, uh, dated November 17th, that staff summary that they've put, put together. It says staff report on the top, then date November 17th, 2021, to Recreations of Park from Dale's. Uh, you know, Dale and, and, and uh, Chris, Christine subject continued discussion on facility use options for the community pool complex. At least there on page one are the various, the three options, uh, the one could, for the actions. So this is page four of that particular document, which is a financial analysis, financial table. And all the, it starts with 2015-16, to the left and all the way to the right is 2021. And it talks about revenues, expenditures, annual city subsidy and percent of cost recovery. At least that table lists 97,358 for revenues. And I believe all of that, or at least the vast majority of that is the money that the city received from DART. Is that, is that correct? That's the revenue that we're talking about? Yes, the majority of that revenue was generated from the um, license agreement and the payment terms that were negotiated when right. that agreement was executed. So, so, so then let me state my, my question. And I guess in reading through the documents, including the uh, uh, reports from the various consulting groups, is it is it the your opinion um, that that ninety seven thousand dollars of the uh, one hundred eighty four thousand five thirty seven expenditure would be could be made up in any other way, or is that primarily uh, that's a you know that's a fair amount of money ninety seven thousand three fifty eight, and I guess what I'm trying to suggest or at least propose as a possibility is whether with an RFP, we would be able to uh, ask DART or other groups to propose what they think they should pay for the limited use of the facility, if, if not the exclusive use of the facility and perhaps maintain a good portion of that $97,000 that is listed on in this table. Again, I'm not sure if that's particularly clear, but I'd like to sort of, uh, if you will, have my cake and eat it too. Have it a more general agreement that for not exclusive use, but use that satisfies their needs and, and maintain uh, this revenue. So David, to answer your question, I would say, um, I would recommend that um, staff just re revise item number B um, for the, because the intent is to, with that item is to, as an option for the city is to release a request for proposals. And then it could be an individual group or it could be a partnership of groups. It, we would, once we city wrote the RFP, we could include in there pretty much 
any terms and conditions that the city was looking for. And it could be some type of hybrid approach. It, we could use, we could write it in a manner that allowed for mixed uses. Okay, so the word exclusive would be removed. I think that's what, that that kind Correct. of we would up, we would up, rewrite that to bit. get closer to your intent. To, yeah. Okay. Okay. I'd like to see that. I think that would be helpful. Thank you. And then, well, sorry, just this, to. What about I'm the sorry. Plan? Sorry, David, let me just to yeah. answer your first question, Chris, just to clarify if option C was taken, I think this goes to part of the first thing that we were talking about. If option C is taken, then we would fall back on the pool allocation policy. I just want to make sure. That is correct. The pool allocation policy would become effective um, with the community pool complex as it is with the other ones. Got it. Thanks. I'm sorry, David. Keep going. Right. Well, I, again, I don't know if that allows for it. some sort of a contract or whatever with various groups that would guarantee a certain amount of revenue, which is, I guess, what I'm getting at. Um, but what I perhaps again, I'm unclear on this revenue issue. Uh, the ninety-seven thousand, which is, I guess, uh, fifty-three percent of the total cost of operating that pool complex. Uh, do you, would it be positive, do we, with our other pools, do we raise that much money? Um, because again, the, the use of the pools in March, I guess, other than the summer months, it's nice to get some sort of revenue for that. Uh, personally, I don't, wouldn't particularly want, even though it's November, and I guess that remains part of that contract, I wouldn't be still in swimming today myself, so. That was a joke, but. Uh. So the revenue that the city receives from some of the other complex pool complexes is right. significantly higher because of the variety of programming and the recreational swimming and the lessons that are taught by the city, they generate, those are the primary revenue generators. So that 97,000 you, you, you would predict would be made up from some for some of these other activities, I guess. Um, we do anticipate that there would be some city programming that would be offered there if it was brought back into the city's inventory because there has been numerous requests by the public to use that complex for public swimming. Um, we probably would maintain that complex as a primary facility for our user groups. Um, so we probably wouldn't expand a lot of programming in there in that complex, similar to what we offer at Manor and Arroyo, um, because we know the user groups, um, we would try to balance that time out. But I'm, I guess I'm specifically asking if you anticipate that that $97,000 in a particular fiscal year, in this case, 2021, would be made up by those other activities at the community pool complex. Yes, we do. You do think that, okay. We Thank actually you. think it will exceed that. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you, Chris. Any other questions, Commissioner Siegel? Uh, no, I don't think, I mean, I just, I'd like to hear what the other commissioners' uh, questions are. Well, I think Commissioner Hurt has some questions. Tim, can you unmute? Yeah. Uh, well, first off, I want to say I, I still think it was terribly short-sighted on the part of the school district to not move forward with a, a joint use project that would mutually benefit the uh, community and the taxpayers for which both the city and the school district serve. But uh, be that as it may, uh, we're here. But so, yeah, you know, I think uh, in regards to this hybrid approach that Commissioner Siegel mentioned, you know, I think it's confusing this, this exclusive use terminology that this is used in the staff report, because correct me if I'm wrong, but under the ongoing arrangement and since 2011, since this started, in fact, this community pool has not been 
exclusively used by DART. Is that not correct? Aren't there other groups that, that work with DART to, uh, to sublease, if you will, time at the pool and, and uh, other groups are being served as well? Is that not correct? I think that's true. And Chris, correct me if I'm wrong, but those other groups pay DART. They don't pay the city. They pay DART. So the city never sees it. Okay, but, but Darcy, my, my, my question is the exclusive use is, is misleading and it's misleading in option A and it's misleading in option B. And, and I think the, uh, the idea that option B could be expanded, uh, we get beyond that exclusivity idea and we, and we get into the possibility, as Christine mentioned, of perhaps, uh, uh, constructing a, uh, a proposal that would also allow for uh, re recreational swimming hours and and, uh, and and perhaps city city programs as well. Uh, but so I guess a couple of questions I have. One is I'm curious as to what Christine what what impact you you would say. There's some reticence about a long-term agreement at this point, given the unknowns of uh, the uh, uh, the school district pool project. What impacts would that have, assuming they are able to go forward and 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 complete that project anywhere close to uh, 2023? So right now there's, um, there are a lot of um, underlying discussions going on about other pool complexes within the city um, that are not necessarily city owned and operated and whether their availability for user, the aquatic user groups to continue use of those facilities. Um, if for any reason, some of these pool aquatic facilities are not available, it will have a significant impact on what the groups will ask of the city and will need as far as available pool time. Um, well, okay, but, but no, I guess my question is the, 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 you know, obviously the school has its swimming programs that are, that are being conducted now and and the water polo and the and the and the competitive swimming, so when those all get diverted to the district-owned swimming pool, what impacts do you anticipate that having on on the uh, city-owned pools? We do anticipate that the school district programs will no longer use the city facility pool facilities and they'll use their own. Um, and that will hopefully free up more available time, particularly at the Arroyo pool complex um, for other users to backfill those times. Um, we don't feel that there will be a void um, upon their departure to their own pool because of the needs and the demands of the other user groups. Okay, so that's my question. You think that it would be a basically a net positive impact on the city facilities in that there, there would continue to be sufficient demand and then the, 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 they would be by creating a new supply, taking, uh, uh, making more time available. Yes. That could, that could, be, that could be beneficially used. Yes. Okay. The, um, um, and the, 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 the other thing is, I was looking at the, the 2018 three initials, the first one's a B uh, report, uh, BAE, and it looks to me like, at least for the most recent fiscal year, the cost recovery at community is in the ballpark of what your cost recovery in, uh, back in 2018 was from Arroyo and uh, uh, well, not, not as much as Manor, but, but a little bit more than Arroyo and a little bit less than Manor and Civic. It, it, so, I mean, 
Kim, could you reference uh, which page you're on just so we can all? Well, I, I, I'm referencing page uh, eight, I believe it is, of the BAE uh, Aquatics Budget Summary. That was uh, one of the attachments uh, of the different consultant reports. Yes. So see. when the city council adopted the revenue and pricing policy in October of 2016, they also approved very specific subsidy levels for a variety, for every activity and program and service that our department operates and offers to the community. And we are we have taken steps incrementally through um, fee increases and other means to get to those subsidy levels, um, either through grant generation, um, fee increases, there's a variety of other reducing expenditures, um, reducing staffing levels where it's appropriate, um, especially during the pandemic. So um, is, there a, is there a council uh, set priority for a target of what the cost recovery should be, a percentage? Yes, um, I don't have that right in front of me, but I believe it's um, it was designated between 60 and 70%. Yeah, so, okay. And, and also, yeah, and as you acknowledge and as the, the, the consultant report points out, I mean, the, the previously uh, the city was the, the, the rental, rate was below market and, and and it's obviously incrementally gone up to put us more in the what the marketplace should should be but as i understand it the 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 leases that dart pays have also gone up you know significantly to reflect those increases uh, um you know uh Let's see, materials I've seen here are, you know, it's it's up uh, almost fivefold uh, from for the the lease payments uh, since 2012. So, so it, it, is what Dart is paying on a per lane per hour basis uh, in the same ballpark as what now is being charged at, at the other pools? Well, no, they are still under the terms of their old agreement, so they don't they don't have a per lane per hour. No, I, I, yeah, I, I know. We're, it, 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 you, we're measuring it differently. They're paying as their month is their rental fee sent on a monthly basis. Their monthly license agreement payment is higher at a higher rate than their regular per lane per hour rate that they charge that we charge at the other complexes right but if you were to break of course you have no way of knowing how many per lane per hours their their actual usage of that pool that they have a license agreement to is but so you you would not be able to to um, extrapolate what their monthly uh, payment equates to on a per lane per hour basis. No, we do not monitor yeah, that's their, right. okay. their programming operations. Okay. I think Tim brings up a good point though. Tamiko, would you be able to share on the screen the city report so we can see that table that Tim's referring to? Sorry, Tim, I just feel like when, when we're referencing pay, like specific tables, it would be helpful if we could see it up on the screen. Tamiko, is there any way that we can share the city staff report? I think it's like the end of the document um that Tim was referencing yeah and I do I do just want to point out because it it does get lost in the text a little bit in, prior to that table um the expenditures that you see in that table are only our annual operating figures and it does not include any of the capital replacement and repair items those at the time that this arrangement was initially negotiated with DARTS, um, the city had um, communicated that we would not be continuing to invest um, in capital repairs and replacement items. 
Um, and so the city was not contributing this additional amount of money um, to that complex. Um, but after having that lease arrangement um, for several years, the complex was falling into a, a deterioration rate that um, it was getting to a point that the complex just, we could not operate it per the health department. And so the city had to make some initial investments and has continued to make significant investments in that complex um, to accommodate the groups and keep that open and available for public use. Got it. So Tim, that's what you were referencing, right? Like that top row of the revenues? Well, that, I think that was what the one David was referencing. I, I was referencing to, to, to compare that 53% cost recovery figure you see in the FY 2020 on that chart to the cost recovery percentages that were presented in the, um, the, the, the BAE report that we received as one of the attachments to the Got staff it. report. Page eight of that one. Got it. Okay, cool. Just wanted to make sure we all understood. So sorry, Chris, just since we're on it and then Robert, let's or sorry, Tim, if you have any other questions. So, sorry, no, no, just that's so, it for me for now. Okay. Um, so, just so I'm clear, like, if we just focus, let's say, on like the last to keep confusion down, like the last couple of years, like fiscal year 1920 and 2021. So, what I hear you saying is that if we just look at the boxes, um, actually, let's not look at 1920. I feel like that got all skewed because of COVID. Um, so, maybe like 1819. Um, and then like 2021. So what I see in this box, and I guess I'm just asking to confirm, is that the, under the row revenue, that 72,000 um, in fiscal year 1819 is what DART's paid. The 160, 471 it, were city expenditures. Is that correct, Chris? That is correct. Okay. So the city paid 160. DART paid 72. So the difference is that the city subsidized $88,000 of the pool. And then in addition, are you saying in addition to that, the line that you just described above is that the city, in addition to that 160, paid anywhere between 150 to 200 in annual capital replacement and repair costs? Correct. So there, it, it varies depending on the year as to what kind of items that we, we have a 20 year maintenance schedule that was developed for the complex and various things are scheduled each year and we budget for those. We've, we're in the process of replacing the chlorine generator for the complex. We're, this year we're also doing, replacing all the electrical panels in the mechanical uh, room at the complex. We've replaced pumps, we've replaced filters, um, heaters. Um, I'm trying to think of what other things. So, so you would say it's safe to say that that 160 in expenditures is actually 160 plus 150. So it's really anywhere from like 310-ish to the potentially as high as 360 for that year, broadly yes. speaking. Yes. I could, I could get you the capital cost for that. Okay. I think I just want to um, make sure I understood that. Yeah, um, this does not, this also does not reflect the operational costs or expenses that DARTS has over and above this. So this is not inclusive of those. Um, so yes, DART did pay the city the 72,068. Um, but they have additional operational expenses for their organization as well on top of this. That they pay the city, you mean? No, they don't pay the city. It's just they cover those, their own expenses associated with it. Okay, thank you. Sorry, Vice Chair Ono. Okay, you thank you. You a while ago, sorry about that. So actually this table does raise some uh, questions. The, the percent of cost recovery is actually much less given those capital replacement repair costs, it's nowhere near 45% for fiscal year 18, 19, 
2019 or 2021-53%, it's substantially less. Is that correct? That is correct. If you add in those capital replacement costs, yes. Right. And some of the expenditures DART may have, uh, in addition, could be for their own staffing and what have you. It's, it's their cost of doing business, I presume. And it seems yes, that... They do, they do have operational costs. They purchase their own equipment. Right. Um, right. They do help replace with pool covers. Um, they've contributed to that. They've also helped with lane line replacements. Yeah. Okay. Um, but the reason DART's currently, the agreement does not include contribution towards these other city expenses is because the agreement is 10 years old and that wasn't uh, considered relevant when that agreement was created. Is that correct, Chris? Yes. The terms of the agreement have um, slowly, um, the, the amount of subsidy that the city was willing to contribute to the operation of the complex has decreased over the years as we renewed agreements. Okay. So to me, that's somewhat of a symptom of a, of a 10 year old agreement that isn't competitively bid is that you don't get uh, the ability to, uh, to specify new requirements and seek uh, other creative solutions. Uh, when I look at the three recommendations, the one question that comes up to mind is, is the city ready to, is it ready, city ready to take on this new programming if, the agreement with DARTS lapses on, in December of 2021, because that's just like six weeks away. Um, and it also makes me wonder, are these recommendations mutually exclusive? So for example, um, the city could choose uh, to move in option C, but within the year, they can determine uh, to create an RFP. Because when you create an RFP, in my experience, it's not an overnight process. It takes quite a while to really uh, create a good RFP. So in six weeks, there won't be an RFP out on the streets with responses for recommendation B. It seems like if you don't do A, you at least you have to do C. And at perhaps whether it's near time or sometime in the future, uh, work on creating an RFP, it seems the timing is off to me. Is, do I misunderstand something? No, you are correct. Um, the city is in a position where it could take on the scheduling of the community pool in the six weeks. Um, and that will most likely have to be an interim measure um, depending on what council decides. If the council decides to move forward with an RFP, um, then staff would continue to work on that and get that out on the street as soon as we were able to. Um, I suspect that we would have something out and available um, probably by summer, but that would probably, um, it would probably require the city to maintain kind of a month to month scheduling um, of the community pool complex for that until we were able to get an RFP out if that was the direction council chose. Right, so B is really uh, put off at least six months or so. So really the, the two recommendations in my mind would be to uh, extend the DART agreement to cover this six month period if you want to do an RFP or the city take over the programming of the community pool complex in this interim period. Recommendation B is not, it's not something that could be done until summertime. So um, I think that's, that's correct. Is that not true? No, that's a good assessment, Robert. Um, yeah. Staff is just not recommending at this time for council to extend the agreement because we 
we do have other organizations that have expressed the same interest in using that complex. Okay. And well, that was not the same case when this arrangement was initially developed. Okay, thank you. That's all I have. Commissioner Vink, I think your hand was up next. Yeah, just a quick question to clarify. Is the city's, does the city's fiscal year begin July 1st? Yes, it does. Okay. And uh, I guess another quick clarifying question. Um, I mean, I suppose it would be possible to, um, I mean, d uh, January 1st is just weeks away as uh, someone indicated. I suppose it would be possible to have an interim extension of the agreement um, and then, you know, provide a date certain by which that would terminate you know, say the beginning of summer 2022? Yes, that is a possibility. The city manager has the authority to uh, extend the agreement of which we have already done so through December of this year. Right. Their agreement normally expires in October or mid-November, um, depending on their programming. Um, so we do have, the city does have the capability of doing that. Um, the only caveat to that is that the city is anticipating needing to close down community pool complex for multiple two week closures um, in order to replace the electrical panels in the mechanical room at the complex. And also there's a large electrical panel that sits outside the complex between the Davis uh, the school district's tennis courts and the pool complex. And the city is replacing that as well. And <clears throat> unfortunately, we don't have a lot of control over the timing of when the equipment is going to be delivered um, because of some of the shortages um, that the equipment has been pushed off. Now we have a tentative date of January 12th. Um, so that's delayed the project. We had hoped to get it done in uh, December and January, so there would be minimal impacts to the groups, but <clears throat> it looks like it's going to be pushed into more January, February, and March. And so the city doesn't, is, we're a little hesitant to um, commit to providing the use of the complex, not knowing at this point um, how long of a closure we're going to experience. Thank you. Any other questions, Commissioner Bink? Okay, Commissioner Chambers, I think you had your hand up next. Thank you. Uh, Chris, I just have a quick question about the closures for community pool. When I was with, at the Aquatic Council meeting um, a few weeks back, um, I was under the impression that um, the DART representatives had let me know that a generator was going to be brought into community pool so it wouldn't need to actually be closed. Is that not the case? Um, we are trying to confirm. Um, originally, our public works department had communicated that to us, and mm -hmm. I had been communicated it to the groups um, that the generator was going to be on site um, and the minimal disruptions. However, the most recent meeting that we had on this past Tuesday, yesterday, um, that does not appear to be the case. It looks like there are some logistical problems with connecting the generator to the complex that are um, more difficult than originally anticipated. And the city's electrician has said that that's probably not a feasible option for us. Okay, okay. Just wanted to clarify, just, uh, sorry, it's a little bit off topic, but just, just checking in. Um, and then um, in terms of this, my second question, what what is, I mean, is the DART exclusive license like tw at 12 months out of the year or does it go from, you know, a certain time you said it ended in October, November. So, um, is is that? Can you clarify the actual their actual period of when they have the exclusive license on the community pool? 
So the base agreement is from March through October of each okay. year. Um, okay. They have, in the past, historically, they have extended, requested an extension of time almost up to Thanksgiving. So usually like mid-November. Um, and this, <coughs> excuse me, the city has granted that extension. Um, I don't know if it's been every year, but it's been, it's been close. It's generally, we figured they're going to be in there from March through mid-November typically. Okay. And this, this year we extended it through December, the end of December. Okay. And the fee schedules remains the same as the terms in the um, March through October what was um, the I'm sorry. The, the fee schedule for the additional added months um, are the same as what the, ter the terms are for their March, October. That is period. period. Okay. Yeah, their extended okay. time is the same terms. Yeah. Okay. And then um, just going back, I, I know that there's been a lot of discussion about possibly editing C and B and, and different things like that. But um, just for clarification, if, if community pool goes back into the city's allocation, um, the city, we would go follow the pool allocation policy. It would be priority one. So the city would be able to offer whatever they could, right? Um, and, and, or could not. Um, and then it would be offered if D Davis uh, Joint Unified School District needed it. Um, it sounds like they use Arroyo. So that probably won't be too much of an issue but then followed by the priority three, which would be all of these pool allocation user groups um, to be able to allocate it out. So it's, it seems to me that C gives us the most flexibility necessarily to have um, the city take, you know, have ownership of it, be able to offer what they can. Um, and, and then also it, it wouldn't necessarily mean DART couldn't, still rent you know the time that they needed as well in within the language of c if we're following the pool allocation policy am i missing something no you that is an accurate assessment of it yes okay okay and then we'd also potentially be able to um maximize the efficiency and also possibly increase the city's revenue and lower the percent of cost recovery that's potentially, um, you know, l lurking around uh, what looks like 30-ish percent or something like that for a community pool. That would be our goal, yes. Okay, thank you. That's all I have, Darcy. Great. Commissioner Siegel, looks like you, I don't know if you, that <laughs> hand is still raised from before or if it's a new uh, hand. No, uh, I have some further questions and comments. Uh, it seems to me that what's lacking from this discussion, uh, including my own original comments, is that we've, so we, well, let's just say we've been focusing a lot on the finances. And I think the finances are clearly important, but what we haven't, and I think uh, Robert really piqued my interest in his comments, uh, is we have certainly not discussed the value of the programs that DART provides. And my guess is that they just kind of can't turn them on and off. They hire coaches, they hire people. If there's not a real clarity about whether or not they have access to the facilities, it's gonna make a major in, impact on the programs that they can um, uh, provide. Uh, and I let me just say, and I guess I should probably, uh, Divulges, you know, I've been somewhat active with uh, Team Davis uh, as a football coach. And in discussions with folks from Team Davis, it does turn out that uh, DART uh, provides some important programs for Team Davis. Uh, do we really think that the city of Davis is going to take on all of these programs? Uh, I, I guess, uh, uh, personally, I'm, I'm very hesitant about proposing some major changes that would impact what I now understand is, is the 1,500 or so young people between the ages of three and 18 that are in these various DART programs. Now, I don't 
I'm not suggesting that this requires exclusive, uh, you know, rights to the this this uh, pool complex, but I do think we probably need to sort of think in those terms as well, and whether or not we really think the city of Davis, for example, is going to take on uh, these specialized programs. Uh, I like Robert, and I also agree with Robert that uh, RFPs are not quickly either put together or for that matter responded to, or for that matter evaluated and, and awarded. Uh, I think it's a mistake for us to back ourselves into the corner with various tight time constraints. I actually agree with him that probably what we should do uh, although we do seem to have a window until March, till the programs start up again for DART, because they're about to- Just, just to clarify, the this, is the tech, this is the technical questions section, David. I know you want to make a recommendation, which is totally fine, but that's not what we're doing in this space right here. It's technical okay, well, questions. I, 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 I can wait. I thought the comments seemed to stretch into the into this realm, but- Sorry, guess, that's my I, fault. Well, no, no, it's not a fault. I personally don't believe it matters whether it's well, maybe it does matter. And you're do, being a, a good chairperson. So you're trying to uh, uh, follow a certain protocol. So anyway, I'll, I'll, I'll save my comments then. Oh, later. but maybe maybe we could ask Chris in terms, like just to kind of tweak what you just said into a technical question. Um, Chris, are you aware, I mean, do you um, anticipate or do you think that um, DART's would still be able to, or do you think any of the aquatic groups in the city would still um, be able to provide what they provide to our youth um, if a change like this occurs? Or is, you know, is that something that um, you could be able to comment on from a technical standpoint? Um, I, I really can't comment on DARTS operations or any of the other organizations that would be um, be interested in using this complex. I, I will say DARTS has expressed um, that they would not be able to offer the same level of programming that they currently provide um, if they did not have access to the community pool for as many hours as they currently have in addition to the other aquatic facilities that they use. Um, it does, I would say the arrangement, if the city were to bring this back into its inventory, um, it does not preclude these other users to be able to use the facility. Um, it would just have to be incorporated in as part of the Aquatic Council's discussion as to the number of hours that are allocated for each group. Um, it doesn't preclude it. I, I mean, any way around it, it's, if the arrangement at the community pool changes, it, I, it will undoubtedly affect arts in some form or fashion. To the level, I, I can't respond to that. Thanks for trying, Chris. <laughs> um, but but I do I do um, I know that we have had and that maybe just to reflect the public comments um, that we received via email. I know we haven't opened it up for public comment yet, so happy to have folks talk about this when we do open up public comment. But I do know that um, at least two meetings ago or the last meeting um, that there were many positive things that were said about all of the aquatic groups, um, darts for sure included, um, and that there were multiple families who commented on the importance of the aqua stars, the aqua monsters, the, the aqua darts, um, and that, that all of those groups have um, very much contributed to um, children with special needs, children with children with disabilities, and so really um, to not pit any one group um, as better than others. Just want to reflect that public comment in the past has talked about how all of the groups are just incredibly beneficial for our community. 
And now I have sw um, gotten out of the lane of technical questions myself. Um, any other technical questions? Tim, I saw you took yourself off mute. Did you have a, anything before we open it up to public? I was public? just gonna suggest, as you said, uh, Madam Chair, I think we're at the point now where public comment will help to edify us. Awesome, thank you. Why don't we do that? <laughs> Let's open it up to public comment. So just to remind folks, um, and I think that Tamiko is sharing that if you would like to make a public comment at the bottom of your Zoom screen, you can click the button that says raise hand. If you are calling in, you can press star nine and um, that will indicate a desire to speak. We will call on you one by one. You have three minutes to speak. Please state your name for the record prior to speaking. Um, Tamiko, it looks like we have Will Portello's hand raised. Good evening. My name is Will Portello. I am on the DART board. I've been a member of Masters for almost 20 years. My girls have swam with DART um, and the Davis Water Polo Club, as well as the high school. And I grew up uh, lifeguarding for the alternate, now defunct alternative recreation program here in the city of Davis. And I'm here to answer actually some of the questions. This is actually one of the most successful public-private partnerships of the city of Davis. I'm going to keep you in mind that there have been terms of exclusive use. This is not exclusive use. DART is effectively managing community pool. So the last year, if we go back to the last year the city operated, there were under $18,000 in revenue from this facility, um, plus the city absorbed the expenses. DART is now providing that staffing management. Every user group has access to that pool. Every group that used it in 2011, every group to continue forward uses it. Um, it's been offered, it was offered to every group during pandemic. The only group that I'm aware of doesn't use it is DAM, um, is they have some other options. There was a question raised about cost recovery uh, if the lease terminates as it extended. Basically, DART is paying $46 an hour for a community pool. Would, we could rent it for 19. So. And the city pays capital improvements on every facility. But let's go back to DART as a group and the, the user groups. There's been a focus on user groups and not on the fact that these are consisting of individual participants. The city is not subsidizing DART, a not transparent nonprofit. The city is effectively subsidizing the use by the individual users. In this case, about 1,400. If we look at the 2014 staff report, staff correctly noted that we would add 20 part-time employees, two and a half full-time employees, and offer a full range of complementary uh, services that the city wasn't offering. And that's occurred. So please make no mistake, those positions will go away without the access to com community pool. If it's terminated, we will no longer be able to offer that. And you'll be effectively voting to end this public-private partnership. What we would really ask to have happen at this point is that this lease be extended to October. That will allow us to look at alternatives for programming, determine which staff will stick around and which won't. We'll have the opportunity to figure out what we can accommodate and what we can't. The facility will still be available to every user group, just as it's been. Um, we'll be paying significantly more. Uh, and we've offered to pay significantly more, uh, well into the 65% recovery rate that the staff report recommended. And then at that point, um, the RFP should be completed and a response can be made. But the idea that we're just going to simply terminate what has been a successful partnership under the notion that this is um, a good thing to, for the city to reclaim when they do not have programming in place to operate it. So thank you for your consideration on this. Thank you, Mr. Portello. Okay, I see a couple more hands raised. Um, James Chrysler. Tamiko, can we go ahead and unmute James? James, you should be unmuted now if you can go ahead and okay. get started. Hello, um, James Chrysler, Davis resident. Um, I just want to thank the, uh, the staff for their well drafted presentation and clarity of the past history and how we've gotten to where we are today. Um, I wouldn't want to see us undo all the work that we've seen in the recent policy work that we had also discussed this earlier this evening. Um, this is a community resource and I, I'd remind the commission that 
they really, really need to listen to the staff's recommendation of returning the community pool back to city ownership, city, city full run. Um, while I appreciate that a lot of the various swimming community has had access to the pool, the one set of users that we haven't really talked about is the community users. They don't have access to this pool at this time. Um, we have a well-drafted policy. I think we should give it a chance and put it into place. Let's see how it runs. At the very minimum, you know, staff, if public resources are gonna be granted licenses to groups, it needs to be done through a, a full public transparent RFP process, which is gonna take a lot of time. This contract was set to expire in October or November. It was extended to December. There's, you know, contracts have well-known periods of time that allow groups to plan for. And so I think we should let this contract sunset and follow the policies that we're putting into place and have a nice transparent process so that the community can see how community resources are being managed and allocated. So I thank you for your time and I thank staff for their, their clarity of their presentation and the work and the history and the effort that was put into that. It's, it's very much appreciated. And I look forward to watching the process as it continues to unfold. Thank you. Great, thank you, Mr. Chrysler. I think it was Chrysler. Um, yes. Okay, um, Erica Cutler has uh, their hand raised. Apologies, it's actually Tim Cutler. That's what happens with when you're using your spouse's computer. Uh, I really appreciate the time. I'm the um, uh, longtime Davis resident, uh, been in this community a long time, um, also the DART board president. Just wanted to advocate for an extension of the existing agreement for some of the same reasons that were discussed. Um, I think, you know, the RFP process was proposed um, in the fall without much time for DART to respond uh, to that um, information and programmatically change. Um, and so I think while the RFP goes through, it just makes so much sense to me that the city would continue to allow DART to manage the pool. I really do think it's important to recognize it's not exclusive use. Um, as an example, Aquastars gets five hours of community pool use during the summer every single day. Um, on top of that, when I noticed Commissioner Silba mentioned that DART gets the, the, the cost of that rental, we actually pay 46 as was mentioned, but can only charge 19. So we're only recovering a partial piece. We're actually losing money every time we don't use it ourselves. As I think about the um, operational costs, recognize too, we're there every day correcting all of the facilities that the city does not have to worry about. So when we talk about R&R, &R, um, DART does contribute. Um, $15,000 in R&R to the city already. So that could definitely be something to consider in the RFP proposal uh, in the future. Um, and, you know, there's operational costs the city would have to incur if they ran programming. And I think that's not being considered. I think the biggest issue that I have sort of thinking through city managing the pool is thinking about what is the plan? So I, I hear that they're not worried. I hear there's, a, there's an idea that this could be cost recovered. What is that plan? I haven't seen a proposal for what that plan looks like and how the rental hours will work and how that will be something that they can cost recover in an equivalent manner. I've also heard that some community members have been interested in, in that facility, which is surprising to me because I'm there every day and it's not the most beneficial facility to the community. So I'd wanna know what does that user group look like compared to the 1400 plus users that DART is currently um, citizens of Davis running through that programming. Just quickly on the operational side, absolutely, we would have to let coaches go. That, that's not even a question. And our programming would be sliced and we would not offer um, the same scholarship level that we do with over $100,000 in scholarships given to underserved communities, um, working with migrant school camps, uh, or, sorry, migrant camps to bring swimmers in for swim programs. So there's just a tremendous amount of programming the city doesn't offer that would go away if this went away. We're just asking for some time and then also an opportunity to bid on the RFP. We may not be the, the, the best group for the RFP and that's fine. That's the council's discretion. We just want some time to be able to go through that process in a fair, equitable manner. And we've had a 10 year partnership with the city. We just wanna make sure we can continue to maintain operations while we work through that process. So I won't take any more of your time. I just wanted to make sure that those pieces were, were included in the discussion. Thank you very much. Great, thank you so much, Mr. Cutler. Um, 
Roberta Savage, your hand is raised and you should be unmuted now. Hopefully you can hear me. Uh, Roberta Savage, I've been a resident of Davis for 25 years almost. Um, we have a daughter who swims on the Aqua Monster team and she has many friends who swim for DART. Um, I wanted to respond to Commissioner Siegel. Um, our team, our motto is every monster matters. I am a special ed attorney. I know we have kids who have disabilities, who have IEPs, who swim on our team. We don't do Special Olympics because they're incorporated and integrated and an integral part of our team. Um, I'm not going to say one way or the other about community. I've watched community over time and community pool is a great pool for many people to use. It's very frustrating to see a single user group, but that's not to say that wouldn't happen if you let the license lapse. DART would still have access to that pool, um, as would other groups. And I think that's the, that's the thing that really strikes me when I talk to families in the community um, who are wondering, why does no one else get access to that pool? So we can call it a management agreement, but in effect, what it has looked like is a pool for a single group, user group. And I think that's some of the frustration that you might hear. Um, it may, they may still be a main user of that. And I don't know that any aquatic group would care if that were the case, but I think it's the perception that a city facility is, is in essence a private facility. Again, it can be used primarily by DART, much like other facilities and pools are used primarily by other user groups. But I think right now, if there's just a perception um, that the city needs to adjust. Um, thank you for your time. Thank you for all the work you guys do. Have a great evening. Thank you. Um, okay, thanks. Karina, your hand is raised and you should be unmuted. Yes, yes, I am unmuted. Hi. Hi, my name is Karina. I am, I guess, a newer Davis resident by many standards. I've only been here seven or eight years, but my husband has been a swimmer within Yolo County since his early, early, early days back before um, DART was DART and they were actually Aqua DART. And that's who he remembers swimming against. Um, now that we live here in Davis, uh, we have our three sons swimming for Aqua Monsters only because my son grew up um, swimming for Pete Modokaitis's best friend and there's no one else that he would trust. I have realized that in terms of community, it is a hot button item. And I agree with James that the main people who are, we aren't talking to in this discussion is the community. Why are we talking about how the council wants to ensure a safe, healthy, equitable community without talking to the community at large? We are talking to aquatics groups and not to the community that would be brought in if the city brought community pool back into the city's own programming. I see that DART, Aqua Monsters, Water Polo, Aqua Stars, DAM, everyone brings something amazing to the table in the city of Davis. And we have amazing aquatic groups that so much so that there are not enough resources for all of the aquatic groups. I think that speaks really highly to how much people love their programs. But if we're talking about an equitable community, then we have to believe in the allocation policy that the entire commission just recommended that that allocation policy is equitable and that it will speak to being equitable for the entire community and all aquatics user groups that include the city run programs that are for the community. If we believe in the allocation policy that all of you just voted for, then I don't know how you can't recommend that the city knows how to allocate the pool usage. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else, uh, if you could please raise your Zoom hand if you would like to make public comment. Going once, going twice. Okay, we will then close public comment, thank you. Okay, I'll um, let us now move into our just final discussion and ultimate recommendations um, on this item. So commission members, 
does anyone have any uh, thoughts, recommendations um, to get us to closure on this item? <clears throat> Madam Chair, I'll, I'll jump in here. Um, I, I appreciate the comments from the, uh, the public commenters and the, the uh, discussion that uh, occurred amongst the commission members prior to that. Um, I, I've, I've felt from the start that the right approach for the city is to go out with a request for proposal and really to put everything at once into that request for proposal. Um, as much as I appreciate the desire to bring this pool back into the, you know, the, the city programming, uh, the reality is that, uh, you know, resources are a consideration for the city and there's not unlimited resources for the city either to run its own programming or to uh, uh, continue to um, uh, subsidize to the extent that they do subsidize the, the hourly pool rental rates that are currently in effect. And I've certainly been compelled by the information in the staff report about the hourly rate that is the city is paid under this uh, lease arrangement with the DART. And uh, my own feeling is if there's something that the city would like to see differently out of that request for proposal, then put it into a new request for proposal and let's see who is uh, a bidder that can satisfy what the city is looking for and who can give the city the best deal. Um, so I, I would be in favor of a um, more thoughtful process on creating that RFP and in the interim continuing to uh, extend the existing agreement with the DART. Great, thank you so much, Commissioner Bank. Commissioner Siegel, I think your hand was up next. Oh, you're muted still. Yeah, let me just let me just start off and say I was not suggesting that there are not other aquatic groups that don't have uh, people with special needs in them, but I do know uh, that Team Davis, quite frankly, after discussion with some of their board members, does have a special relationship with DART, and at least it's important to them. And I think. Uh, uh, not an exclusive uh, situation, but I think a very important one. Um, th that said, I think that what uh, uh, Eric said makes makes a lot of sense. I just want to put a, a finer point on it, and that is to say, I think somehow the suggestions uh, in terms of the RFP that we should ask for some sort of hybrid um, uh, approach to this in the sense that there would be uh, groups like DART or Aqua Monsters or whatever, by the way, uh, none of my children, nor, nor have I ever been a member of any of these groups, quite frankly. Um, so I have no particular history, no particular ax to grind, no particular loyalty or anything else, but I have been trying to study what the groups are doing and they're all doing a marvelous job. Uh, that said, I do think that it makes a lot of sense as I think uh, Commissioner Ono suggested earlier on that we continue the current arrangement for a sufficient period of time so that an RFP can be thoughtfully proposed, thought, thoughtfully responded to, and th thoughtfully awarded. And hopefully we could suggest that that RFP would have both elements that would satisfy the various aquatic groups and at the same time uh, provide a certain period of time every day for some sort of community free swim. I don't see why that's not possible, uh, quite frankly. But I do think, uh, as I think uh, Eric suggested, that we should continue the current agreement long enough so that we could do this other process in a thoughtful, thoughtful manner. Um, whether that's through next October, whether whatever it turns out to be. 
uh, I have responded to RFPs, but in, in uh, you know, in a medical research uh, uh, setting. So I'm not exactly sure how long this RFP would take, but we shouldn't, uh, we shouldn't rush the process uh, so that people can respond. And again, if they are given sufficient instruction that we're, that the city or whoever is interested in a more of a hybrid process that includes uh, all the aquatic groups and in some way, or at least the opportunity for all the aquatic groups to respond, then I think everybody should be satisfied. Thank you, Commissioner Siegel. Commissioner Hurt, you are up next. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm thinking uh, that both Commissioner Mink and Commissioner Siegel are, uh, are on the right track here, uh, uh, particularly given the the time issue as with the electrical repairs, the possibility that the, uh, the, the pool would be closed through March anyways, then you get into a, a period of months going into next summer where there would, there would undoubtedly be a significant programmatic disruption that would infect the, a sizable chunk of the Davis community when you're talking about an organization with, I don't know, I've seen 1,200, I hear 1,400, but a whole bunch of young people, ages three through 18, who are swimming in these programs, and we're going to disrupt the whole thing going into the summer swimming season. I, I just don't, I, I think the approach ought to be to, as Commissioner Vink suggested, to uh, extend the current uh, uh, licensing agreement for the management of the pool until the end of next swimming season. And in the meantime, uh, get a request for proposal out there so we could get some thoughtful, uh, I mean, a well-designed request for proposal and some thoughtful responses. So I, I think that uh, uh, would be the best way to proceed. Thank you, Commissioner Hurt. Oh, sorry, Tim, were you done? Oh, okay, sorry. Yes, I'll put myself off mute to say yes. Thanks. Okay, Commissioner Chambers, you're up next. Sir, can I just ask, I know we're out of the technical question part, but I just have a quick question for Chris. Um, how, uh, at what point did uh the city notify the dart program that this was potentially going to be up or since the lease term was up i mean the assumption it was that we knew it was going to be up for discussion since their lease term had ended in 2021 um i don't remember the exact date um dart did submit a a uh, long-term lease proposal um, earlier this year. Um, the city did not respond directly about that proposal. They followed up with a, rev a revised proposal. I believe it was in September um, and the city manager informed them at that time that the council was not in a place to renew the agreement at this point and that it was pending further discussion. Okay. So, I mean, so it's, it's, it's been a little while. I mean, they, they knew their lease was up, whether something happened after that, it wasn't determined, but the lease was determined like done as of this fall. Yes, that is correct. Okay. Um, so I, I just want to go back to kind of just a bigger picture. I think the, you know, some of the discussions are really focused on ex like exclusively using a city taxpayer resource uh, for a private group and, and going back to the bigger picture of things. Is that the precedence that the city and us as commissioners would like to be okay with is that, you know, this, this city resource is being licensed out to private use only. Uh, I, I'm afraid that if we go the RFP process, 
it's not going to be able to be allocated for really what community pool was originally there for, which was for the community. And um, if the city is losing tons and tons of money, you know, over this, or if there's, you know, high costs of things like that, at least if it's the city using it, you know, and the community being able to use it, then maybe it's more understandable, but right now it's not accessible by the community at all. So I'm just concerned that if we follow this such uh, choice B to solicit requests for proposals, we're just assuming that we're okay with private only use for a city resource. And, and it also doesn't necessarily like mean that we trust the policy that we just talked about it. I think we've all agree that maybe a hybrid method would be beneficial to the community as well as all of these private user groups. And so I, I, I would really like to, uh, you know, visit the city being able to retain this resource. And if they can't provide programming, okay, so be it. But there's plenty of, of user groups out there that would be able to pay and run their programs and perhaps not have, you know, severe consequences by being able to still rent the pool time, but allowing also the city to use the facility as well for city swim lessons or recreational swim time. I, I know that, you know, Manor Pool is heavily used by, uh, during open swim time, I'm sure Arroyo is, is heavily used for open swim time as well. And as we get back to normal, it would be really nice for the city to be able to have some of that pool time as well. And I'm not, and I, I, you know, give lots of credit to the DART programs and what they offer for lots of kids, but I also want to make sure that we're not forgetting about the rest of the community that don't swim or don't use the pool for that purpose. Thank you, Commissioner Chambers. Commissioner Ono, Vice Chair Ono, sorry. Okay, so I just wanted to, uh, to make sure I understood uh, if a request for proposal is released by the city for use of the community pool complex, that doesn't mean that any of the bidders will be awarded the contract. It may be that they're not acceptable, in which case that would certainly give the city of Davis the ability to take over program. More so, you would think that it would give the city time to prepare not only the RFP, but time to prepare for the option of taking over the programming of the complex. So I, I do see perhaps a benefit of extending the DARTS agreement until a fall date established by Parks and Community Services, but also that asks that an RFP be structured for release uh, in May, June timeframe. And then that gives us, based on the RFP response, we could take a look at what uh, DART or a similar organization could put together or a combination of organizations. And then the city can also consider what it would take for them to take over all the programming, the staffing, the administrative work, and then uh, be prepared for subsequent action in fall, whether it be an RFP bidder is selected or the city, or it could be a DART or a combination of organizations. But it seems to me that DART has a program in place. Um, there are some benefits letting it go for a little bit longer while this RFP is developed and released and evaluated. And it doesn't rule out the city taking over the community pool complex using the aquatic uh, policy that came up uh, as recommendations this evening. So I was going to make a, a recommendation or a motion, but Tim has his hands up. So I'm not going to, to do that, I'll, I'll wait. It's Tim's other hand that's up now. Yeah. Uh, I, I, did, I didn't, I, I, far be it for me to stop you from making a motion, Robert, but. I just wanted to respond to Commissioner Chambers' comments about precedent. Well, I, for the Davis uh, Municipal Golf Course, 
uh, is uh, run by a private management company, has been for decades, and provides uh, uh, a great range of, of recreational opportunities for, for young people and for seniors and, and lessons and the whole range of things. So there's certainly a precedent for, for a public-private partnership with private management of a public facility in the recreational sphere in Davis. Yeah, but you don't have to be a member to go there. You can just be a public, like, right? You don't have to be a member of that municipal golf course. No, but you can you can join the one of their men's clubs that they have set aside times each week for for tea times for that group. So yeah, there are, there's membership within the within the sphere, which which is ideally what a request for proposal would be designed to create where there is broad public uh, access, but with you know designated time for programs uh, that are run by the management interest. Got it. Eric, your other hand is now raised too. Just a quick follow up on Commissioner Hurd. What, what appeals to me about the request for proposal is, is that the city can set the terms for that. The city can say, we want a provider to provide 20 hours of lap swimming per week. And guess what? It's gonna be a lot cheaper for that to happen under DART or Aquamonster or DAM or some other entity we don't know about to do that than the city providing it with their staff and at their cost structure. So for me, that's what appeals to me about the RFP. The city doesn't have to say, we just give it over to the highest bidder. They can put their own requirements on it and say, there's things we want out of this. And guess what? You're going to have to provide it to be a successful bidder. So I think there's just a lot of benefit and upside for the city and for the things that it wants to accomplish through its own aquatic programs by entering into this uh, public-private partnership opportunity. That's all. Thank you, Eric. Commissioner Chambers, now your other hand is raised. Yeah, sorry. Uh, Chris, is the city prepared and able to put resources to go through a full RFP process? <laughs> um, <laughs> if the council if the council directed staff to do that yes um we do have a lot on our plate it's um, dale could probably speak to this better than i but um yes we would we would incorporate this project and work tasks into our existing staffing it it is not something that's going to be able to be accomplished on a quick turnaround so if if can I ask you another question, follow-up question? So if the city were to take community allocation back to like the city resource in their pool, do you think that in a combination, if, if the city was not able to provide any resources, let's say, or staffing or anything to run swim lessons or maybe some rec swim and that's it, do you think that community pool would be filled with aquatic user time otherwise like between all the all the aquatic user groups yes we have user groups who would like to use the facility so there, there's there's not enough time for what all of the aquatic user groups would necessarily be asking for correct okay. thanks thanks commissioner chambers um, I'll just make my comments short and sweet, and then maybe someone can think about a motion to make. Um, I really feel like this is just a continuation of some of the previous discussions that we've had in other meetings about equity, and that to me, um, it it is quite disappointing to me as like a taxpayer and somebody who cares about equity uh, to see that the city has been subsidizing one swim program for depending on if you look at the numbers I was kind of uh, calculating it on my phone um, but uh, subsidizing 
uh, over $200,000 a year just for one user group. And um, it, that to me, just from an equity standpoint and from a taxpayer standpoint is just, it blows my mind. And so I um, cannot support personally a continuation of the lease under, um, I, I don't want it to go another two weeks, let alone another two months, let alone until fall, because I feel like it is a misuse of my dollars as a taxpayer that the city is, um, that, that the city is paying so much for, for one user group's exclusive use. Um, I also just have to go on record to say that uh, for folks to come on and say that some of the first, pro some, some of the programs that may get cut, uh, if this doesn't happen, if that this lease isn't continued, that some of the first uh, programs that may be cut are some of the ones that are targeted for folks who have disabilities, I think is, um, not uh, the type of like equity stance that I would expect from a Davis community user group. Um, I just that had to say that that really bothered me. Um, but just overall, like the numbers, Chris, I fully trust your staff. And if your staff are saying that you guys can take on the scheduling for this, I'm fully supportive of you. I know you you all do this with other pools uh, and that adding another pool into the scheduling mix for you likely is a lot less work than an RFP. So um, in hearing others' comments, I know that I'm probably standing out as uh, the dissenting uh, voice in, in all of this, but um, just want to go on record to say that um, Dale and Chris and city staff appreciate all the information, all the financial information you provided for me. It seems like a no brainer just to go with option C. Um, and yeah, thank you for all your time on this. Um, Commissioner Siegel, did you have another comment? Yes, uh, yes, I did. Uh, as, as somebody who also believes in equity and serving the community, I must say, I think I come to the exact opposite uh, view that you seem to uh, come to, Frank. Quite frankly, uh, and also as, and I'm not quite sure uh, that I fully understand your comments about people with disabilities and which, and who said that that would be the first program cut. I'm not- oh, okay, I it's okay. I can go back and tell you, it was one of the DARTS members that said that if the lease was not extended and they did not have exclusive use of that pool, that those services would not be able to be provided. Well, I, I think I think a number of services would not, not be able to be provided. I, I'm not quite sure though in a discussion of equity that how that actually pertains. Uh, I would have to say that the structure of the RFP, which would be, I, I presume, more than just put something together, that it would be a number of different uh, uh, things that would people would be interested in satisfying, a number of different questions that would be raised. And I think as uh, Robert Ono said, if there's nothing that comes back, that appears to satisfy the terms of the RFP, uh, the award does not have to be uh, awarded, quite frankly. So I, I, I'm frankly puzzled. And I, I must admit, I'm also puzzled by all the conflicting issues of finances. I, I am not sure that I understand fully uh, where the city of Davis comes out better just in terms of finances. I still don't quite understand that. Uh, $19 an hour has been thrown out, $46 an hour has been thrown out. I presume people are talking about not just uh, July, August, uh, but uh, the rest of the time. Uh, are we, whether the pool will be used by other folks in March and April or October, November timeframe, I, was going to ask that question. We're not just talking about peak summer months. So I, 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 I'm just wondering whether or not, uh, and I, and I'm, and I frankly am puzzled about the reluctance to put together a well-constructed RFP and see what it yields. And if, again, if it doesn't yield anything satisfactory, 
so be it. But I, I, I must say, I am still in favor of that approach. Understood. Just to clarify from my own stance, my equity standpoint uh, didn't wasn't pertaining to the RFP. It was pertaining to a continued single exclusive use by only one group, thereby not providing equity to everyone else who but let me, let, me, let, me, let me ask you this, Darcy. If the RFP is structured in such a way that it talks about the availability of that complex to the community in certain hours of the day, certain months of the year, uh, and it's structured in that fashion, does that, that you don't know, think satisfies your I notion? think that, no, I agree with you that an RFP can be structured. I, I'm sorry, when I said the equity piece was pertaining to a continuation of a single, of a DART single use, um, that was the piece that I was referencing. I do think that in an RFP process, it could be developed from an equitable stance for sure. Um, from that standpoint, I still think that the city could do it better, but that's just me. Well, no, I mean, your, your opinion is valuable and you have the experience, but again, I'm not, again, uh, what, the other thing that I'm concerned about is sort of a, an abrupt end of current programs that serve, you know, well over a thousand children. Uh, you know, why would we want that to end in two weeks if there's nothing to take its place? Uh, like, wh what's the, uh, why wouldn't we want it to end after there's a response to an RFP that discusses providing the same services, perhaps less expensively, perhaps in a more equitable fashion, whatever. But uh, I, I- And just to clarify, it wouldn't be two weeks. I think the, the, um, the contract is uh, scheduled to begin back in March. So it would not be an abrupt end. It is, um, and Chris, Chris can correct me if I'm wrong, but March is when the usage begins for the next year. Yeah, well, somebody mentioned uh, something about two weeks. Maybe I misheard. Yeah, so DARTS has expressed interest in continuing their program year round. Um, so, but the way the contract have, we did have to, yeah, if the commission and the council went that direction, we'd have to have a conversation with them about that because um, we would have some. I believe that their interest is to continue January and February also for that. But in the interest of time, um, we are getting pretty late. We still have another item that we really need to present. Um, if there's a commissioner that would like to propose a recommendation. Uh well, yes, off, if, the chair would if the chair would recognize me, I, I have a motion I could put forward. Got it. Commissioner Hurt, would you like to make a motion? It yeah. looks like you even have it written down. Uh, well, no, I'm just reading from the from the thing. I, I, I move that this commission recommend to the city council that the city solicit a new request for proposal uh, for the uh, management of community pool complex and that uh, in the interim, the uh, negotiate uh, uh, and renew a new lease agreement with DART uh, to extend uh, their lease through uh, October of this of next year. Um, Madam Chair, I'd second that if the if Commissioner Hurt would leave off the part about October, I think just you know, I, th I think the city staff will have incentive to do this, and if we can be less prescriptive. Very, very, very good, very good. I, I would amend that uh, to take out the October and so be extended Great. While, the, while the RFP process plays out. Yeah, I second, you, I second that motion. Well, okay, so I had one question about, uh, I think October 1 is, add some complexity to that, but I would like to amend that to, to a, until a fall date established by Parks and Community Services and City Council. It, it seems to me, we don't want this, I wouldn't want this licensed agreement extension 
to have an indefinite end. And so while I have problems with October 1st, I could see a, a fall date in 2022. Is there any interest in, in being clear on what that extension uh, end date looks like? So I wonder though if, sorry, we have a motion, we're now dis we're discussing it. Um, I wonder if part of that is outside of our scope. And, and I guess I want to defer to Chris, like in terms of um, can this, I mean, our commission is a recommendation making group. Right, we're not a decision-making group, and so um, to talk about timelines of contracts feels a little bit outside of our scope of general recommendations. But but don't want to not hear what you all are saying because I think everyone's getting to the same point, which is you don't want to go on forever. But I, I don't know where um, Chris, could you opine real quick on where that our role might lie? No, I think it's appropriate for the commission because we are seeking your input and your feedback on this and council is very much interested in hearing what your thoughts and recommendations are. Um, I think my suggestion, given Robert's comment about, you know, not having a, you know, a, not including an ending date that the agreement not proceed is, um, maybe instead of with until a fall date in 20, just to be completed in 20 by 2022. Well, let me say, I, I like the idea of October 1st and I thinking from the perspective of somebody who's gonna be hired to be a coach uh, or running a program, uh, I think it's perhaps considerate and reasonable uh, for them to have a clear date that where they know that if their RF, the response to the RFP, their response to the RFP is not accepted, that they can offer a person a job until October 1st. I mean, uh, it may be that uh, the RFP will be completed, award, you know, responded to, rewarded in a, in a quicker period of time, but the RFP could certainly specify to begin October 1st. Uh, I frankly would be quite surprised given where we are now at the end of the year, that this whole process would be completed before October 1st. So I, I think actually having a date is, is, is both a good idea in terms of uh, DART, who has to give somebody a guarantee of a job and plan programs and everything else, as well as giving sufficient time to, to do this whole thing properly. Um, sure, I would just, clarify that the city's license agreements specify a term limit and by an individual date. So although I appreciate David, uh, Commissioner Siegel's comment, I don't think the commission needs to get into that level about specifying a date. I think the city and DART's would have more flexibility in negotiating that agreement if that's the direction the council wanted to go. Uh, if I could, I would uh, amend my motion. Um, and, and I think going back to what the chair just said, I mean, our role is as an advisory body to the city council. And I think if we wouldn't need to put in a date, but we should make clear this is our thinking that this be done and and wrapped up in an, and 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 um, just providing this extension, this short term extension, to get us through the point where we can have the RFP. So to this, so I think uh, the suggestion that uh, to say uh, no, that the um, um, you think you're going to get selector, every uh, recommend that the, the city solicit a new request for proposal for management of the community pool complex. Uh, and uh, in the interim, the um, license agreement with DART be renewed uh, uh, for a period 
no longer than the end of 2022. Okay, Commissioner Hurt has made a motion. I would second that. Okay, so we have a motion by Commissioner Hurt. It was seconded um, by Vice Chair Ono. Let us vote. Commissioner Vink. I have. Commissioner Chambers. No. Commissioner Siegel. Uh, yes. Commissioner LaFleur. Yes. Commissioner Silba, or excuse me, Chair Silba votes no. So that is two, three. So that motion passes with a vote of, I can count, five to two. Did I get that right, Chris? I think I did. Yes, that's correct. Okay. Thank you all uh, for your comments and for the discussion. Um, I really appreciate hearing everybody's voice. Okay, we still have another agenda item too, on top of it all. Item 6D, discussion on Assembly Bill 2404, Fair Play and Community Sports Act. Chris or Dale, who should I hand it off to? Dale, did you wanna take this one? Or do you want me to take it? I was gonna have you take it since you worked on it a little bit more than I did with uh, Ender. Okay. So uh, tonight we wanted to introduce uh, to you information related to Assembly Bill 2404. Um, the city has been in the process of um, trying to provide more equity in uh, community use sports for that um, over the years since this uh, legislation has been enacted. And what we're trying to do tonight is to begin familiarizing you with what the current city practices are, where we think the city can continue to improve upon, and some of the strategies that we are planning on moving forward with in order to become um, more informed and more transparent with providing information out to the public um, related to this legislation. So at this point in time, we don't anticipate that there's any significant financial impacts. Um, there could be potential impacts as far as capital costs for replacement and repair um, and new infrastructure, potentially if approved by council at a later date for that. Um, what the Fair Play and Community Sports Act pretty much um, dictates is the three things in the staff report that I mentioned is community, the law applies to programs <coughs> that are actively run and or supported um, by the city. So it's not just the city run programs, it's all of the third party user groups, such as the aquatic groups, some of our field users, and some of our other facility users for that. Um, in the past, we have not collected um, all the statistical data from some of these user groups, and that is what the city is currently implementing um, effective this year um, with the proposed survey and updated co-sponsorship agreements for that. Um, the fair play also applies to sports that are competitive sports. Um, your general recreational sports um, are not included or as a requirement um, of this. And then also um, programs that involve um, youth that are under the age of 18. Those are the three primary areas. So the city did um, receive a letter expressing concern um, about the equity and compliance for this act. And the city's been in discussions with the claimants um, over 
several months um, and has um, is decided to move forward with a lot of um, the areas which we think the city can improve upon as far as collecting information and training. So what we have tonight before you is a draft survey that the city would like to begin distributing out to begin collecting data on girls, youth sports and community interests and what is currently out there, not only from the city, but also out in the community from individual user groups. And then um, we'd also like to begin an inventory of all of our uh, sport facilities and their individual amenities. And we'd like to have the commission assist with that process um, if possible. Of that. Um, so this is something that um, the city takes very seriously. Um, we do um, believe that a lot of our the city's offerings as well as the various community organizations are very um, open and receptive to providing equitable access to all of this. And so we just wanna be able <clears throat> to document and be able to support that more transparently than um, what we're currently doing. Some of the strategies that we are taking again is the community survey, um, collecting data from all of our individual groups. Um, we discussed this as part of the pool allocation policy as far as collecting seasonal um, participant data doing the resource inventory at all of our park locations, and then also increasing the training opportunities for all of the um, parks and community services staff <coughs> and providing links for training to the various user groups that the city partners with um, in using our facilities. So with that, Dale, do you have anything you wanna to add to that? No, I think it covered it well and, and just add, you know, we are, as you had mentioned, we are looking at your, uh, the survey, um, hopefully you may have some suggestions or comments uh, for those of you who have girls of your own, if this, this uh, really speaks to it, or if there's other things you'd like to see in the survey, we'd be happy to take uh, those recommendations. Great. Thank you so much. And so, so Chris, just again, to understand the scope of what you need from us is comment and discussion on the survey specifically. That is correct. And then staff, um, if the commission wants to assist with the um, resource inventory at all the park sites, um, we have, I can send out a spreadsheet and uh, commissioners can sign up for the various locations and I'll provide you with the check sheet that you just have to check off whether that amenity is located in the park or not. Got it. Um, real quick, uh, Tamiko or Kelly, could you flash up the um, survey draft? I just have one kind of general piece of feedback to give on the survey itself. <clears throat> Sorry to make, ask you to toggle screens again. Um, but as um, Tamiko or Kelly are pulling, pulling it up, one of the comments that I have um, for the survey itself, um, if you are reading at the top um, and it is very much focused on girls sports participation survey, which is awesome and great. I do think that, um, or I would recommend that we add a clause uh, or you know, part, in part of the instructions um, because we know, right, that there are um, children and adolescents who do not identify with the sex that they were assigned at birth. And so to make sure that this survey is as, um, all encompassing as possible that we add a, a clause in there that we're that we are um, really trying to target any population that self identifies um, as being female, not specifically um, 
by just calling them girls, but also there may be children who are non-binary or transgender uh, youth that um, we want to make sure that we're capturing their um, perspective as well. And so um, I don't know the exact verbiage, but I know enough to know that we should probably consult with somebody who would be able to provide us the correct verbiage such that the survey would be inclusive um, for all um, identities. So that was yeah, my, can, otherwise I do start. think the survey, the survey is great. We can certainly do that. Yeah, Madam Chair, I, I don't have any co other comments on the survey, but I certainly will volunteer to help uh, survey the facilities and it'll be a great opportunity for me to learn some park facilities I'm not aware of, so. Thank you. Chris is uh, right. In your name, writing down your name as we speak. <laughs> I just was curious, and I apologize if this is somewhere in the reading, I didn't see it. Um, what's the plan to disseminate these? So we will be putting it out through our city communications team, which hits all of the social media that the city has. Um, going through the school district, also going through the next door. Um, we'll also be distributing them out to all of our active user groups um, that um, we have contra either co-sponsorship agreements with or facility use agreements with. Okay. Yeah, I just, I just wanted to make sure that we can use the resources in terms of um, using kind of some of the co-sponsored groups across all of the sports to get this done just to to I know the city has put out surveys in the past and um, I, it's been hit or miss for me um, of me seeing it and um, with something like this especially with gender equity and youth sports and some of the current um, situations going on within the community, I think it's going to be really important to make a major push to try to get as many responses um, back as possible. So um, I would be happy to help in any way I can to help disseminate these two as well, just to make sure that we we really get kind of the information that we need from, from these um, questions. Commissioner Hurt, I'm sorry, Commissioner Chambers, were you, did you have anything else? Okay, Commissioner Hurt. Yeah, I'm, I'm just a, you know, and I, I get that you, you don't want to have a survey that goes on 18 pages, but if, if, if one of the objectives of the survey is to measure a potential equity gap, and presumably there is one, what kind, we wouldn't have a baseline since the questions are exclusively on girls. You know, if if you know, it turns out that thirty five percent of the girls have participated in competitive sports in the last thirty six months. Well, that doesn't tell us how that whether that's a shortfall or a over what the the comparable percentage is. For the other agenda, so so I just wonder how useful will this data be if we don't have anything to compare it to with the other agenda? Well, we the city has never conducted a survey uh, on this topic before, so we're not going to have any baseline data. Um, I mean, typically when it comes to AB 2404, there has not been any case law really associated with this legislation. And it's, it is something that if a community has a 50-50 you know, ratio of male to female sport participants, youth sports participants, then the types of activities that are offered and the participation rates of girls should be comparable to that. Um, and so that's what we're going to have to base it off of off the first year 
and see where there may be any potential gaps. Um, and then as we, the city collects more and more data, um, we'll be able to compare from year to year, but. Um, well, that's my point. How do you measure a gap if, you, if you're comparing X and Y and you only know the value of X? Sorry, I lost my screen all of a sudden. Um, we're just gonna have to get the data and see at this point um, and continue to work with the claimants. Um, this type of survey was recommended by, by the claimants um, and the content of it as kind of an industry kind of standard. So we're trying to uh, move forward um, and get some preliminary data to start working with. Commissioner Hurd, any follow-up questions or comments to that? No, I, I, I just. I wonder if part of the, maybe this, is, Chris, is this all of the gap? Is this how the gap analysis is being conducted? This one survey we're looking at, or is the city doing other things and this survey is gonna supplement other aspects of a gap analysis? Yeah, this, is, this isn't really a gap analysis. It's getting data of what is actually out there and being, what kind of participation rates we are seeing in, in the various categories, what sports, um, are there barriers to accessing um, existing sports activities that we may not be aware of. Um, so it's just trying to get as much baseline information to, it's not really asking where there may be gaps at this point. It's more of trying to find out, you know, where is there anything that's preventing young girls under the age of 18 from participating in community youth sports? That makes eminent sense. Anything else, Commissioner Hurt? No. Okay, Commissioner Siegel? Yeah, actually, I had some some of the same response that Tim had. Uh, who do, who designed this instrument, if I may ask? Was this we did this internally in Davis, or it was given to us by the state? I'm curious about it because I did have some concerns just looking at the first question. Did did we? Is this something we did ourselves? No, a was template given? was provided to the city. Right. So. And how do you, how is this proposed to be, is this gonna be some sort of random sample of people or is it you're gonna to go to a, a soccer game that where, where girls are playing and give it out to the parents? The, re, the reason I ask that is that right off the bat, when I look at this, I, you know, um, you might, one might've asked the question, do you have any children under the age of 18? I went to a little league, not to raise a, a sensitive su subject, Darcy, but I just went to a little league game so, to watch my uh, grandson play. And uh, if I was given this and if they asked me, I don't have any children in my household under 18. So it seems like there might be uh, some uh, a preliminary question. And you might also ask, uh, you know, something about boys as well as girls, just to get some sort of comparator and then I guess the the method of distribution I, I guess what I you know I think you know there are groups at UC Davis I know when I was at UCSF we we used the survey research center uh, in Berkeley to do a household survey of some something totally different and I and I guess I, I share with uh, Tim the concern that if you're going to do this uh, it's actually a lot of effort to do it, and, and one may as well try to develop the, the most useful instrument um, and a plan, not only a, a good instrument, but how it's going to be 
distributed um, and you know what what your goals are i mean it, it looks once you get past the fact that you're going to give this to parents who have girls i think the it looks like the rest of the questions kind of fall into line although again it might be i don't know i mean i'm just saying it's a good idea i i, I would also be happy to to help out in some way um but it seems that probably uh designing the best instrument to get the best data uh would be reasonable i mean if you guys are sat happy with this go for it but i i wonder um for example in, what about if you gave this to someone who didn't have any girls in their in their in their household so i guess they would choose other but it seems like one common group might be zero as opposed to one, two, or three. Uh, but then you'd probably want to know, do they have any children in their household? I mean, I guess a few questions might be helpful, a few preliminary questions. Well, thanks for being willing to help assist. Um, Chris, would it would it be possible to, if um, Commissioner Siegel provided some of the feedback in, in writing um, after tonight's meeting or just some edits, especially to those first two questions that could really help flush out what the purpose of it is? Sure, yes, we can definitely do that. But the, I just wanna reiterate, the, the focus of the survey is on girls and their right. participation in sports. If, if they don't have, if that household doesn't have any girls under the age of 18, then they wouldn't complete this survey. So what if they're given the survey? What do they do then do? Just hand it back to you and say, I don't have any girls in my household? Yeah, they can do, well, we would not be handing out hard copies of it. We will have a link online that on the city's website that people can access it that way. And then we'll be sending out those links to the various groups and coaches and leagues and stuff that we routinely work with and encourage them to have their members that have girls participating and the schools to, to promote that. Well, you know, not, not to belabor this point, I think it probably will provide useful information, but there's a, uh, I mean, there is a bias in terms of who responds to surveys, unless it's somehow randomly given. And when you do this sort of analysis, you always look at the non-responders as well as the responders or something. Anyway, I, I, I don't know, maybe this is not, maybe I'm getting too, uh, um, too technical. Maybe that's not the goal here. I'm just trying to figure out how this might be done in a way that really gives you the best information. So it's not just a matter of what's in the survey, but also the uh, how you decide to distribute it, what group, you know, but anyway, maybe, yeah, if, I mean, forget all of that. I, I don't wanna get into too much detail, you know, maybe it's not the point. Okay, well, if you want to, though, it sounds like um, city staff would love if there are any um, tweaks or adjustments um, that might clarify either of those uh, initial questions or further down. Um, it sounds like just emailing them to Chris would be helpful. Um, Commissioner LaFleur. Um, yeah, um, somewhere in the discussion, I think I heard that this was provided as a template. So I, I guess my reaction is, I, I wonder how much discretion the city has in making changes to this. Um, if this is a template, I'd be guessing that similar versions of this or same versions of this are being um, spread out to um, um, other parks and rec departments up and down the state. So, I'm, so I, it sounds like there may be some other bigger plan in store for what to do with this data. So I, um, other than that comment, it looks like, um, you know, given the um, uh, questions on, you know, the completeness of surveys and how they're being distributed, I, I just don't know that the city has a whole lot of room to move on it. 
so other than that, I don't really have comment on it. And I did want to say that I'd be more than happy to uh, take part in a, a facility uh, inventory uh, that was discussed. Great, thank you. Well, yours and Eric's name, I'm sure are written down now to assist with that, thank you. Okay, any other comments or feedback on the survey? Okay, hearing none. Chris, do you need a motion on this or is the feedback that we've provided thus far sufficient? Nope, that's good. Okay. Um, great, so we can close that item. And let me pull up the agenda to see what is next. Sorry, I had closed it. Okay. So um, after we have gotten through Assembly Bill 2404, Commission Subcommittee and Staff Communications. Any subcommittees that uh, would like to report out? In... Oh, sorry. Before we can go to subcommittees, I completely forgot to open up public comment for the Assembly Bill 2404 Fair Play. Um, my apologies. Uh, why don't we open up public comment? Anybody who would like to speak on this topic, please raise your Zoom hand. Seeing none, hearing none. Okay, now we can move. I will close public comment. And now we can move to any subcommittees that would like to report out. Um, City Council Liaison Dan Carson um, was not present today, so no report out from him. Um, any report out from Parks uh, Landscape Maintenance Standards? No, we're waiting to hear back from Parks and Community Services about uh, the work they're, uh, they're developing with the contractors. So hopefully maybe in December or January, we'll have some material. Uh, Madam, Madam Chair, if I could add to that, uh, I am trying to get hold of uh, Commissioner Ono and Eric, uh, Commissioner Bink to meet with them to go over the other things that we do have available to start discussing. So um, I'll send you guys both uh, some emails and dates and times that we can meet to at least go over some preliminary information we have to talk about daily routines and maintenance and uh, windshield time that we have. Great, thank you. Perfect, thanks Dale. Okay, um, Eric or Mieko, let, let's hear all about pools and pool allocation. I, I think I think we've covered everything um, under the sun for aquatics <laughs> today. So I'm gonna go ahead and pass on my opportunity to speak on 7C. And I don't know if Commissioner Vink would like to comment on anything, but I'd like to. He's also <laughs> nodding his head. I think he's in agreement. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. Um, Thank you. Though. Okay, so that is it for the committee, uh, excuse me, subcommittee and, and any other staff communications, Dale or Chris, that we need to mention? I have nothing else uh, at this time. Uh, I'll just put another um, opportunity. If anyone would like to assist in doing the court reopenings this weekend, please let me know. Be happy to have you out at the courts. We'll be doing two courts, one at Covell at nine and then the other at Redwood Park at 9.45 on Saturday. Thank you. I can help if you need, Dale. I also want to give other folks a chance if they'd like to, but um, can always help if you need. Okay. I, I, may be, I may be available, so let me get back to you tomorrow, Dale. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm also available, Dale, this weekend. So. Okay, great. Then I'll send you guys an email. Okay, the specific location of the Covell. You got it. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, so looking at the long range calendar, we have our next meeting on December 15th. And 
in January, our meeting falls on the 19th. And um, if you scroll to page 52 of the PDF, you will see the long range calendar. Um, any uh, adjustments that staff or commissioners would like to make uh, on the long range calendar? Oh, very exciting. Uh, in January, we get to make a chair and vice chair selection. So start, <laughs> start thinking about who uh, you all would like to nominate for those positions. Very well, exciting. There, there are no term limits here, Darcy. Um, we are all about equity here, Tim, and making sure everyone has a chance to serve as chair. Um, okay, long range calendar. Uh, we can close that item. Um, do we have a motion to adjourn? I move to adjourn the meeting. I second. Thank you, <laughs> Commissioners uh, Chambers and Bink. Um, Commissioner Siegel. Yes. Okay, Commissioner Hurt. Hi. Uh, Vice Chair Ono. Yes. Commissioner LaFleur. Yes. And Chair Silva says yes. Okay, every every meeting I say, wow, this is the longest meeting we've ever had. And then the subsequent <laughs> meeting is even longer. So don't don't say it then. Don't say I it. Know, I know. <laughs> poor, poor Rick. Rick is gonna be like, I'm never coming to these things again. It's past 10 o'clock. No comment. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, you everybody. You did, Madam Chair, thank, thank you. And thank thanks everyone. City staff. Thanks. Have a thanks good everybody. Night, everybody. I appreciate it. Bye. Bye. All right. <laughs>